What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content. Anywhere on the internet, promise, swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. Oh my god, what a change up. <laughs> it's not tales of neckbeards today, but it is still beard adjacent or even directly parallel uh, to beards. Maybe like so parallel that the lines are directly on top of one another, which is just fine with me. Today we've got the tale of Liberty Beard the Horrible. There was sure to be some cringe had by all. We've always got enough. We love to spread it around. I've also got some new character animations today. Oh snap, they're looking so fly. So I hope that I'll have a chance to use them. And uh, if you do watch the videos instead of just listening, maybe you could point them out. Though I do know most people just listen and that's absolutely fine too. I just appreciate you being here with me today. So with all that said, let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then we will dive headfirst into some good old neckbeard stories cringe. The Tale of Liberty Beard the Horrible. Trigger warning for R, ape, sexual assault and assault. This is not a light one and I am sorry about that, but maybe it can prove a cautionary tale to young men and women in similar situations. Oh, I think I skipped over that part when I picked this story out. <laughs> well, I'll try my best to inject some levity into the situation as much as I can, but let's also prepare for some impotent rage. <laughs> the first half of my story takes place in high school and the second half takes place in college. I also want to mention that I have a lot of gaps in my memory, so I'm 100% sure that there are more interactions with Liberty Beard that are just small instances of him just generally being a neckbeard. <laughs> also, hi Red X if you're reading this. Hey, what's up? Thank you for all your videos. They help me get through my days. Well, I do happen to know that Princess Rosalie is one of our patrons, so I'm super happy to be sharing your story today, and I'm definitely glad that I uh, also help you get through your days. You guys help me get through my days as well. Anyways, up next we've got our cast list, as usual. OP, short, pushover, a sophomore for both halves of this story, just different levels of education. I'm kind of typical neckbeard bait, loves video games, anime, I dress alternatively, and I was far too naive. Also, for reference, men have always seemed to think that some parts of my body are attractive, particularly my chest. Yeah, men love them boobas, I don't know. <laughs> Liberty Beard, a year younger than me. In the second half of this story, he does have a literal neck beard. He also smells bad, just not like intensely, but bad is still bad, <laughs> let's be clear on that. He has enough social skills to know what you should and should not do or say to people, but generally not enough will to follow up on that. Frenchie was my boyfriend during the first part of the story where I met Liberty Beard, average white guy, also Liberty Beard's section leader the year that I met him. He's one year older than me. Section leader? What is that? You guys in a cult or something? <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Claire, though that is not her real name. She was the previous object of Liberty Beard's desires. She was shy, short, cute, and soft-spoken, but she also had a boyfriend. She was in my section in band. BAND! Why is it always the band kids, though? <laughs> I think I mentioned that in the Stinkbeard video. She was in my section in band when I was a section leader, so I feel protective over her a little bit. She is the same age as Liberty Beard. Sorry for the long intro, but here we go! I mean, we gotta have a cast list, otherwise we're just jumping in and I'm like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> Anyways, high school. When I first met Liberty Beard, he didn't really set off any alarm bells in my head. He seemed like a normal band kid. <laughs> Which to start with is already quite a bit weirder than basically any other group in high school, admittedly. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to give heat to the band kids, man. My best friend in high school was a band kid, but they do lack some social graces. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he was socially awkward with women, but not with men. 
At this point in my life, I highly prided myself upon being one of the boys. Ah, yeah. So he somewhat talked to me, but as with many neckbeards or nice guys, even though all the boys treated me like one of them, Liberty Beard, on the other hand, could just not seem to handle that. I don't really know how else to explain it, but he talked to me differently, and he treated me differently. My first incident with Liberty Beard was during a basketball game that our school band was playing at. Frenchie and Liberty Beard played French horn during concert season, but during marching band and pep band, they played the mellophone. The hell's a mellophone? I guess it's this, I just googled it. <laughs> and they sat near the top of the bleachers, whilst me and Claire played clarinet. Oh, Claire, clarinet. Frenchie plays the French horn. I get what- I see what's going on here! I played a little bit of trombone in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. If I continued playing it into high school, I guess my nickname would have been Trombona. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, OP and Claire, pretty close to the front. Since I had most of my music memorized, I could go and sit with Frenchie and a couple of our other friends that sat near him, as long as our band director didn't care or notice, depending upon the day. So during this basketball game, like many other games, I snuck up the bleachers to sit with my beloved Frenchie. We all kept a lot of water bottles around because we would get in trouble with the band director if he caught us drinking anything other than water, since that was bad for you and the instrument. I guess that makes sense. That's why I keep vodka in a water bottle. <laughs> it makes me think I'm playing better, at the very least. I don't recall what led up to this next thing happening, because all I remember was talking to Frenchie, and then suddenly, Liberty Beard was trying to shove a water bottle down my throat while laughing. Context is important, man. <laughs> what set this off? You would think Frenchie, or even another band kid sitting near us, would try and stop this, but no, everyone just laughed. What the hell is going on? <laughs> now, like I mentioned, I'm a pushover. I have a huge fear of people not liking me, being mad at me, or making fun of me. So what just happened was already enough for me to decide to just try and not make a further scene out of this. The only reaction I really had was, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> to which I remember Liberty Weird just trying to shrug it off. This was kind of how a lot of guys treated me. And yeah, Frenchie just let it happen. I have so many stories about Frenchie being a shitty person, but he is in the neck beard. From then on, I stayed away from the top of the bleachers. I stayed away from Liberty Beard. I know I should have reported it, but I kind of felt like I would be ostracized from my friends if I had done that, even if that may not have been true. Which part wasn't true? The fact that they would have ostracized you or the fact that they weren't your friends at all? <laughs> Sound like a bunch of dickhead high school kids to me. I ain't got time, I ain't got inclination. Anyways, we move on to college. So, at the end of my freshman year of college, Frenchie had broken up with me for the girl that he liked, and I basically felt like he had been planning this for months. He did this in an extremely shitty way, with one of those things being getting me kicked off of our lease, since his mother co-signed for him and our mutual friend. I do have beard stories about that guy too, if anyone is interested. We always need beard stories over here. Especially beard stories about beards that run to mommy. Mommy, mommy, fix my problems. Oh, you want to break up with this girl? I'll get her kicked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking balls. This meant that she threatened to remove her cosign for all of us as a way of guilt tripping me into taking myself off the lease so as not to screw over our mutual friend who was actually a good guy to me at the time. At the time. <laughs> This led to my sophomore year of college being an absolutely miserable time for me. Most of the friends I had chose to stay friends with Frenchie instead of me because he had said that I was abusive and, and just awful to him. Aww. And his mommy backed him up on that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the last year, he had constantly ignored me, threw things at me, emotionally cheated, and finally raped me though I'm sure he still doesn't see it that way. I'll admit that during the beginning of Frenchie and I's relationship that I was sorta of overbearing and maybe not the best girlfriend, but I was a freshman, and by my junior year of high school I was basically a completely different person. And after reconnecting with old friends of the both of us, 
They agree that I wasn't in any way abusive to him. This had left me lonely this year, though, having no friends in town and living alone and having to work all the time just to stay afloat since I had to rent a more expensive place. Sorry for the long wind-up, it's just necessary to understand my mindset during this time period. So, freshman year, I had worked at a dining center on campus with Frenchie and the girl that he left me for. Ooh, that's smarts, man. <laughs> it ain't easy to find a new job, but I would be on the hunt. I continued to work there my sophomore year, and I did get promoted to supervisor. Ooh, time to enact some revenge. <laughs> OP doesn't seem like that type of person, though. I did love the job. One day, a new kind of smelly employee was put on the lines that I was supervising. It was during our slow shift, the midday shift, when not a lot of people come in, so we had a lot of time to chat. That new employee was Liberty Beard, who over the last four years had grown a neck beard and gotten chubbier, but so had I, to be fair. <laughs> Now, it had been almost four years since the water bottle incident happened. <laughs> since I was a very different person then, I assumed that Liberty Beard had probably changed too. Now we know what assuming does. Just keep him away from water bottles, you'll be alright. <laughs> <laughs> so Liberty Beard and I started engaging in casual conversation. A lot of the time about how much our high school sucked compared to some other high schools, but eventually we did get into some deeper discussions. The only thing I do think that is good about Liberty Beard is that he could have a very civil debate, and he never engaged in any tactics that shamed me for my beliefs. The reason I named him Liberty Beard is mainly because of his political beliefs. He had a strong sense of thinking that everyone deserved certain liberties, like owning whatever gun they want and so on. He was a libertarian, I think. Yeah, I just want gay couples to be able to protect their marijuana farms with guns. Is that so wrong? <laughs> I'm kind of with him on that. I believe that guns should be regulated, not taken away, so please don't harass me about being a gun-hating commie or something. I would never, I don't even engage in political debate anymore. It's just a waste of time. <laughs> After talking civilly for a month, I opened up about the fact that Frenchie had sexually assaulted me. And also that a previous ex had assaulted me before high school. He had been kind to me during this time, so I thought that this was okay. One day Liberty Beard was on his bicycle getting something from the grocery store, and it was raining, and I knew my apartment was in between the grocery store and his dorm, so I offered for him to come over for a bit to dry off and take a break so the rain could die down. Oh god, I see where this is going. Oh god, the last puzzle piece fell into place! No, OP! Ah, I hate it already. The whole thing was just very awkward for me, and I felt unsafe even though I had no reason to be. Just a gut feeling, I guess. Listen to that. Obviously, this was a big mistake, but nothing further actually came of this other than a fear of him coming over uninvited, which never even actually happened. He wanted to come over a couple of other times, but I always made excuses. Liberty Beard and I talked a lot at this point, though. I could tell that he was kind of into me, but one, I was not interested, and two, I was dating another guy at this point, although he lived two hours away in my hometown. One day over text, Liberty Beard starts opening up about how he had a huge crush on Claire during high school, and he had asked her out, and she refused him because she had a boyfriend. Liberty Beard then informs me that after this, he started having thoughts about assaulting Claire. Bro, you really gonna come out and say some stuff like that? Ugh, cut ties, what's wrong with you? Report him to the police, make a paper trail. What the hell? What the hell? Who's gonna just say some shit like that in the conversation? Oh my god. He made it clear that he thought Claire's boyfriend wasn't good enough for her. And that he could protect her. Yeah, protect her by raping her. What is... What sort of mental gymnastics? I can't even, dude. Like... And, and this is during a conversation. He's actually saying all this to another person. I, I, I don't have the words. What is life anymore? Oh, He felt entitled to Claire's body. As he had felt entitled to mine four years prior. The water bottle incident. This was after I opened up to him about being raped and sexually assaulted. 
and I just genuinely did not know what to say. Samesies. <laughs> Out of fear for my safety, I tried to console him. What? <laughs> you don't console him. You say you're a disgusting human. Go live in the trash where you belong, garbage. This has gone completely off the rails. I don't know what universe we're living in anymore, honestly. That is shocking to me. Oh, I continued to work with Liberty Beard for weeks, trying my best to pretend that I didn't know what I knew. It was hard, but I do hate to stir up issues. Eventually, I started ignoring his texts a bit and having less interesting responses. Block this fucker, dude! <laughs> what? How are you involved? Ugh. I immediately switched from, like, fearing about OP's safety to just being shocked and horrified that she wouldn't immediately tell this guy off and tell him that he's a disgusting human being. Which is probably something that he needs to hear, as if he didn't know already. Ugh. One day, I finally told a friend what Liberty Weird had said to me, and they confirmed to me that I was not crazy and had a right to be fearful and creeped out. More than that. It might just be thought crime, dude, but have him drawn and quartered. Ugh. A week or so after that, I decided to ask my managers to meet privately, and I cried while telling them what had happened, and they said that they had a lot of similar situations where women were made uncomfortable by Liberty Beard's presence, and that even though I was the only supervisor during this time, that they would move me to prep and figure the rest out. FIRE HIM! What is wrong with these jobs, dude? I, casino beard, bowler beard, now Liberty beard. Just hire all the beardos and never fire them for anything that they do. I really don't think I want to live on this planet anymore. <sighs> I was anxious that whole year that Liberty beard would figure out what happened and that I blocked him and maybe he'd come to my house and harass me or worse. Nothing ever happened, but I was scared of him until I left that town. I like to think that most people deserve a fresh start, but now that I know that a fresh start does not mean that I have to forgive people, a fresh start just means that they can go somewhere else <laughs> and try again with new people, but I am not obligated to forgive people that have done shitty things to me. Ah, I like that ending. That's a good moral. Anyways, pretty sure I rambled on for long enough. I hope that anyone who read it enjoyed it, although it was kind of rough for me to relive it. But I may as well get a Reddit post out of my trauma. <laughs> the lowest form of compensation. <laughs> but I do thank you for sharing, OP. I know a lot of these things are like, you know, basically a Pandora's box full of bad feelings. But I definitely appreciate you sitting down and reliving it for me, even though... I was a, a bit judgmental that you didn't shut the dude down correctly. I know not everybody has my personality. <laughs> I mean, I'm a pretty tolerant dude, but if you're being a creep, I will be the first to go head to head. Anywho, if anyone has any writing tips, let me know. It's been a while since I wrote something that wasn't just for college. And if anyone else wants to hear about the other neckbeards I interacted with during high school, one of them being my ex-best friend, let me know. As always, I would love to have some more neckbeard stories. Dem's delicious. I cannot get enough. It's just a fact. It's solely science, etc., etc. <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad that this story didn't turn out a lot worse than it did. You had a fear of this man. That must have caused you some sort of trauma, but at least you weren't actually physically assaulted. At least aside from the water bottle incident. Which I'm still curious about the context. Like... What the hell set all that off? Or is it just dumb high school kids being dumb high school kids? And then basically Liberty Beard never really grew out of being a dumb high school kid. Sure, he evolved some more mature political beliefs, but that does not a person make. You know what I mean? <laughs> Under all that life, liberty, pursuit of happiness jargon, you're still a creep who is seriously considering depriving someone else of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness just because you can't get your stupid little rocks off. You're worthless, under-equipped, shriveled, disgusting little wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to touch it, so I have to make them touch it. Eh. So much for all them libertarian viewpoints, am I right? I guess it's one of those cases of like, do as I say, not as I do. Part of me helps that, yeah, he gets it figured out and swapped around, but 
The other part is like, yeah, I hope this dude gets locked up. He's dangerous, obviously. He feels comfortable enough with those thoughts to like voice it to somebody else. Holy shit, man. Somebody drag him out in the backyard. Give him the old yeller treatment, you know? <laughs> Lenny of mice and men. Just just one behind the ear. <laughs> we won't have to worry about it anymore. God damn. I did say that this story would get the rage flowing and it did not disappoint. A little bit of that rage was directed at OP for not calling this dude out, but I want to say most of it, <laughs> the vast majority is directed at Liberty Weird. This is a disgusting human being. If anybody ever tells you something like this, call them out. If you're not going to call them out, at least notify the police and start a paper trail in case something does happen. Jesus, terrifying. Dip, dodge, duck, dive, and, and dodge. <laughs> If you master the five Ds, no amount of balls on earth can hit you. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh, oh. Two of my neckbeard stories. Oh, twofer. <laughs> Long time lurker and first time poster here. I hope it's the right place to post. I appreciate reading these stories, so I finally decided to share my own. Please keep in mind that these stories are quite old but left a mark on me, so I wanted to share. My first story was from 15 years ago, when I was 16 years old. I was quite a naive and innocent girl back then. It started at my first anime slash gaming convention. Ah, oh, as most neckbeard stories are wont to do. <laughs> I was cosplaying a game character from a popular game that shall remain nameless, I guess. <laughs> and that's how I met my friends. I made a group of people who would later become sort of my closest friends. M was among that group, since he was the friend of a guy, C, my friend K was interested in. When I told K that I was 16, she thought I was joking, since most of the group was 18 or more, which is the legal age here. But we actually got along, and she didn't mind that I was young, since I was acting more mature than many. She was really cool and protective of me, so most of the group knew who were the ones that were underage, and most of the guys would respect that. <laughs> but not our neck beard, I presume. A few weeks after the convention, C organized a party, and my friend K wanted to see C. <laughs> and I wanted to hang out with K, so I went, even though I had to work early. I was never close to M, but I was taught never to be rude, so when he would come to chat with me, I would answer and make small talk. I guess M is the neckbeard. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this story so far. But I wasn't really interested in what he said, because he would say things like, My cosplay is so perfect. I am the character. And he would refer to himself as such. <laughs> Anyways, it was a huge sleepover party. Uh... Once you're over 10 years old, I don't think you get to call it a sleepover party anymore. <laughs> the next day, Kay decided to stay so she could have some more time with C, but the rest left to take the bus and go back home. During the bus ride, M was sitting next to me. I don't know what made him think that I was interested in him, but he started putting his hand on the back of my waist and creeping under the back of my shirt. I was really shocked, but I didn't show it, and I didn't know what to do back then. Break his wrist. But yeah, I understand. Only 16. Never had this experience before. God damn. Unfortunately, OP let it slide, thinking that I might have given him the wrong impression. After the bus arrived at the stop, I quickly said goodbye to the group, and we all went our separate ways. I talked to Kay about it a few days later, and she told me that M has been bragging about how I was into him, and that if there weren't other people on the bus, we would have gotten hot and heavy. I could not believe what I heard. And the worst part is, M was a 31-year-old man. Oh, there's the twist. God damn. Was a 31-year-old man doing hanging out with a bunch of 18-year-old kids and creeping on a 16-year-old? Jesus. That makes it multiple times worse. I never really talked to C and his group since then, but I'm still good friends with K to this day. Oh, so that was just it? Completely cut him off? I think that's the right move. <laughs> uh, dip, dodge, duck, dive, and, and dodge. <laughs>
My second story happened eight years ago. I was in college, and I had just broken up with my boyfriend, and I was looking for a job. I had experience in waitressing and bartending, so I applied to this new bar that opened up. Funny thing was, the manager, named Jay, was the brother of a friend. He looked like a bearded teddy bear. <laughs> oh boy, watch out for this one. I had my interview with him, and all went well. Afterwards, he asked me how I was doing, and I told him, not so good from my recent breakup. Fast forward a few days, and I get a call saying, I got the job, so I was excited. Jay was an extremely nice manager and would always help. I didn't think much of it. Neckbeards in positions of authority, man. You hate to see it. <laughs> then I got back with my boyfriend, but I didn't feel the need to tell Jay since it was my own personal matter. Since the bar was rather new, during the week it would be quite dead, which is understandable. And since being a barmaid, we made most of our money from tips, I would tell most of my friends to come hang out and have a drink. The thing is, most of them are guys. Which honestly shouldn't matter. Customers are customers. I realized that when I would hang out with my guy friends, the only customers in the bar, Jay would get annoyed and tell me to do random chores. Which he has the right to do, since he's the manager. I would never question it. Remember, I said I was naive. My guy friends were telling me that he definitely has a thing for me, but I told him that he was just a nice guy. Honestly, I'm going to give him a pass on that. <laughs> you're sitting down with your friends that are customers. Okay, yes, but you're, you're still under the employ of this bar, right? So yeah, get your ass up and do some chores. <laughs> We're here to play social hour. This ain't a fucking sewing circle. But of course, I'm sure things will turn around right quick. <laughs> Let's see. Anyways, during other dead shifts... Jay would ask if I wanted to shop for the new uniform. I wouldn't refuse because the bar was dead, and there was another barman, and I didn't mind getting off the clock for at least a couple of hours. One of our regular customers, Elle, would always stop by for a drink after work. She's a nail technician that works nearby, and she got close to all of the employees. She would tell me to go see her if I wanted my nails done, so I did one day. When I was there, she asked me, How's my love life doing? And I said, it's much better now that I got back with my boyfriend. She looked at me surprised. She said that she thought that me and Jay had a thing. And I asked her what made her think that. She said that he already paid for my manicure and that he sees us go on shopping dates. <laughs> I told her that the shopping was for work and I had no idea that he had paid for my nails in advance. Going back to work, I felt awkward. I told Jay that I should repay him for the nails, and he said, It was okay, since he had a deal with Elle. She gets free drinks, and I get free nails. Hearing that, I felt a bit better that he didn't pay for the nails himself. <laughs> I let it go. What? He didn't pay for the nails himself. He's just embezzling from the company that he works for. <laughs> That somehow makes it better. Jesus, dude. You know that ain't right, but I guess however you need to justify it for yourself. What I'm supposed to do? Go give this manicure back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to make sure there was not another uh, misunderstanding, I started talking about my boyfriend to my other co-workers and made sure that Jay could hear. After having heard the news... His attitude towards me completely changed. Things like helping me close the bar, he just wouldn't do anymore, and he'd rudely tell me to do it myself. I didn't care that he had misunderstood something, because I might be naive, but I am a straightforward person. If I'm interested in someone, they would know. And if I'm not, then they would also know, which is a lesson I learned from the first story. Anyways, <laughs> after a year... The place closed down <laughs> due to lack of customers and poor management. Yeah, I saw that one coming a mile out. <laughs> but I would randomly get texts from Jay from time to time asking how I was fishing for info regarding whether I was still with my boyfriend and coming up with excuses to meet me, like asking for items that I thought he gave me out of kindness. 
like a sewing mannequin that his dead aunt left him, which I asked to pay for. <laughs> Super random. I gave a time and a day to meet so I could give it back. Well, he never answered or showed up since. Honestly, the first story gives me like way more creep vibes than the second one. Dude comes up and like just starts touching her without any sort of consent or anything. Jay, the, the neckbeard manager, is sort of a, more of a soft kill. You know what I mean? He's like, hey, want to go shopping with me? And I, I don't know how somebody could be this naive not read a little bit further into things, realize that you're treated much differently than any of the other staff, specifically male staff members. It just all seems rather obvious to me. And if she's 25 at this point in the story, then it should be rather obvious to her as well. But for whatever reason, she's just like, yeah, cool. I get a couple hours off work. Yeah, cool. He paid for a manicure with stolen <laughs> alcohol. Like, oh, it's so weird, dude. Hope he would be 31 now by my math, I suppose. So I hope <laughs> that some lessons have been learned that naivete is no longer uh, the go-to excuse for creepy encounters like this. Just cut it off. If there's any doubt, you can just go ahead and, and tell the person straight out like, look, you give me bad vibes. <laughs> I don't understand why I'm being treated differently. I'm not interested in you in a romantic way, because blunt and harsh uh, generally works for me. <laughs> I like it pretty well. I even did it to a dude the other day. This white dude comes up to the fence. He's like, hey, we should both hang out because we're both white dudes in the Philippines. And I'm just like, I'm not looking for friends right now. <laughs> Sorry, the wall is up. I got a whole lot on my fucking plate without additional obligations. <laughs> And uh, I think that's a good way to go about it, honestly. Neckbeard or, or normal person, just keep the wall up until they prove that they deserve to be on the other side of it. It might be a cynical way to go through life, but hey, it has kept me fairly safe. But with that two fur out of the way, I suppose we could fit one more story in here. So uh, let's jump right into it. Stealing a lady from a neckbeard. <laughs> Just from the title and the, the dark username, I'm going to put this firmly into the camp of neckbeard fanfiction. Probably. <laughs> I have my doubts even going into it, but go into it we shall, because apparently I, I can't get enough of that cringe. <laughs> I never thought I would ever have a post for this subreddit. As a man, almost 50 I shouldn't think it can't slash won't happen to me. I underestimated what life experiences I will have to learn from. Due to scoping subreddits in advance of fake encounters. <laughs> I don't have a post for this subreddit. Well, let's make one up. <laughs> Our cast, me, that's OP, Neckbeard in all his filthy, rude, sexist, Disgusting self. Oh, Chrissy, <laughs> not a real name, is our damsel in distress. Son in law is himself. I call him Viking because he's a huge blonde with long hair and a big beard. <laughs> but no real dialogue from him. And then security guard. They could keep you out or keep you in. Yeah, that's what security guards do. Guy, you're so likable or relatable. What an in-depth description for all these characters. I shouldn't come out against the OP so hard. Okay, let's reset. <laughs> the title just threw me for a loop, man. I know it's going to be stupid. <laughs> the story. My son-in-law drove me to the store to pick up a couple of things that I ran out of. We walked down an aisle or two when I saw Neckbeard hovering around a woman with a basket just trying to shop and doing her best to ignore him. I know some women don't want a man to step in and help, but this poor lady looked like she was holding back from choking him and failing with each passing second. We stood there for a few seconds until I saw the neckbeard try to get handsy with her. I looked at my son-in-law and said, Wait here! He smiled and said, huh, Don't get arrested! I walked over to this lady and said, Hey, babe! You almost ready? She gave me a weird look, and then Neckbeard pipes in with, Hey, back off! I was here first. 
we were just about to go for a coffee and, and get to know each other better. I think you should go find your own lady. Now, this is a good move, and it can be quite helpful for a lady who is in trouble. But for the neckbeard to have, like, the level 100 perception to see through the ploy and be like, back off, I was here first. <laughs> I don't think that that's how it went down at all. Luckily, it seems the woman also has a level 100 perception, which is much more likely for a woman than a neckbeard. And she says, oh, there you are, Tom. She says to me, Tom is not my name. I was hoping you guys would get here. And at this time, I looked over my shoulder to see Viking standing right behind me. I'm done here if you are. <laughs> All done here too. L let's get out of here. She grabbed my hand like we were a couple and we walked up to the till. On the way there, I told her if she didn't get everything, I'd pick up what she didn't get and she could wait in her car and I would bring it to her. <laughs> oh, the level of chivalry here. I can't hardly stand it. And she says, I have everything. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking creep. <laughs> I didn't have anything bought by this time, but I stood right behind her in line. Without looking behind me, I could tell from the B.O. alone that the neckbeard was directly behind me. After she paid for her items, I was going to walk her out to her car so she would be safe from neckbeard. As we passed by the security guard, I gave him a quick rundown on neckbeard, and he said that he would handle it. I took the woman to her car, and she thanked me profusely. I guess he had followed her through the whole store, making lewd comments, and was being very rude and very creepy. When I came along, she was about to dial 911. <laughs> when she saw what I was trying to do for her, she played along perfect. I wished her a safe trip home, and she drove away. Aw, oh, you didn't get the girl? Get that phone number, etc., etc.? That's really how I thought this was gonna end. And it would seem more legitimate than I thought until I just had a peek at the next paragraph. <laughs> I went back into the store to get my shopping done, and Viking was waiting for me by the door. I asked what happened, and he pointed to the office window. There sat Neckbeard, handcuffed. <laughs> Ah, false imprisonment by a rent a cop. <laughs> there was an on duty police officer who came in at some point. He saw the guard shuffling Neckbeard into the office and followed to see if he could help. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Just the stars aligned. Kismet happened in this grocery store today. <laughs> Neckbeard was not only handcuffed, but he also had a spit mask on. I get called into another room, and the cop questioned me about how I knew the lady. <laughs> this is so stupid. I told them, honestly, I didn't even get her name. I just saw that she looked like she needed help, and I said the first thing that popped into my head. After signing the statement, I was free to go, but I had to ask, what are the charges against Neckbeard? I guess this isn't his first run-in over things like this, because the cop said, that they'd been watching him since there had been many reports, but they could never catch him red-handed. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. What the hell? Is this a small town? They just got police resources like that? <laughs> Let's all watch out for this creeper. Oh, we caught him red-handed. He's going downtown today. <laughs> what the fuck? Today they got him with one, lewd and mischievous behavior, two, resisting arrest, three, assault on a peace officer, four, stalking, the list went on, but he said he couldn't tell me all the charges, you know, because of the investigation. <laughs> I can violate this creep's privacy and tell you, like, some of the charges, but I can't tell you all of them, you know, investigation and whatnot. <laughs> Oh, boy. And of course, you know, OP totally understands that. <laughs> I asked if I would be needed in court, but was told that my statement was all they needed from me. After almost two hours of being in the store and not getting one thing in my cart, Viking and I walked away without anything but a story. 
After telling my daughter, she said it would make a good Reddit post. I hope it fits this category. If not, I'm sure one of you nice folks will give me the right subreddit to post it in. How about r slash that happened? <laughs> it was all true. I was the shopping cart. <laughs> Have a great day or evening or morning or night or whatever. My fellow carbon-based, oxygen-breathing, bipedal primates, may your life bring you nothing but joy. Ah, oh, you've brought me some joy today, OP. Probably not in the way that you expected, but... <laughs> God damn! Uh, it seems to me like this dude is out here just, like, farming karma as hard as possible. Posting in old and popular subreddits. 43,000 karma, cake day, July 23rd, 2020. So he's been around for less than a year. Oh, well, five days more than a year, I guess. And uh, endless posts about everything. Like, maybe he is legitimately just the sort that likes to share and overshare. But I don't know, man. <laughs> it seems like you, you're doing an awful lot of stuff on Reddit. Not all of the posts are bangers, but I guarantee the ones that are bangers are completely made up. Oh, there's r slash roast me. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, if uh, crystal meth was a human being. <laughs> Dude looks like a crackhead Albert Einstein. It's like I'm looking at Trevor from GTA 5 if he was <laughs> like a thousand times less likable. <laughs> and what the hell is this in the in the upper corner? It's like a bag of trash. <laughs> Bag of trash just hanging in the room, you know? Aesthetic. It's a fucking dildo hanging from the light switch. I... <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here, man. I don't know if I got the time for that. <laughs> Wild. If this dude came up to a lady in the middle of a grocery store, she would run away in a fucking panic. Neckbeard or no, just escape both of them ASAP. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh... Oh, P, oh, P, oh, P. What are you doing to yourself out here, man? <laughs> just, just insane. So, yeah, I don't buy the story one little bit. Dude is so broke, he's got to have his son-in-law drive him to the store and stuff. And he's, like, offering to pay for my lady's things and help her out to the car and shit. Like, is she a decrepit old woman? Probably not. Nobody steps in to save decrepit old women. She's probably an attractive 20 or 30 something that half the store would have stepped in if she actually were to be assaulted anyways. And I hate to make presumptions like that, but tell me that I'm wrong, comments. <laughs> tell me that I'm wrong. Ugh, what a mess. <laughs> I tried to step away from the cringe today by getting into r slash neckbeard stories, and it seems like I've stepped into it even harder than usual. So I don't know what to do here, man. I suppose we could go into r slash tales of neckbeard tomorrow and hope that things turn out a little bit better. <laughs> or I could just slink back to my personal subreddit r slash red x reads with my tail between my legs and admit that the whole experiment has been a failure. <laughs> I guess I'll leave it up to the comment section. Let me know where you guys think I would find the best stories and uh, I shall follow. I shall heed that advice. <laughs> but despite the, the cringe... The incidental cringe, I guess. This was a fun episode. I had a good time doing it. And uh, I got a little bit of r slash roast me in here. So maybe we could try that subreddit out someday since people seem to like when I slam OPs. And those people are like asking to be slammed. So it's it's all in good fun, I hope. <laughs> and the username, Richard the Neckbeard. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. Mousebeard the False. <laughs> False prophet. Once upon a time, Red X said, If it's a good story, who cares if it's real or fake, as long as the writer tells us that it actually didn't happen. Well, challenge accepted. I don't mind if my name is shown this time, if it ends up on the channel, since this is a fake story that does not involve real people. Although it is somewhat inspired by true events. Ooh, true events. <laughs> Now that I've told three real beard stories, why not just have a little bit of fun? So yes, none of this will actually be real, but it's just more of a fun tale for Red X with my great attempt to sound as authentic as possible. 
and I appreciate you being up front with us. Like I said, I'm I'm up for beard fanfic, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ain't nothing off limits as long as we uh, get a little giggle out of it. That's all fine. Find a dandy. So we shall see, but first, the cast. OP, that's myself. Mouse is the beard of our tale. And Moon is a popular girl at school who is also Mouse's older sister. Our tale begins in the very early years of high school, around the beginning of sophomore year. I had just transferred schools. After moving almost across the country, my father wanted a new change of pace and insisted that I would like the beach scenery of small town nowhere. And after a while, I was convinced to come along rather than staying with a relative. In the start, it was decent enough. Although a very small town, it wasn't on the majority of maps, so very rarely were there any tourists or even any major events. Gossip was everybody's form of entertainment. Oh god, too true. <laughs> but nobody knew who I was, so it was possible to stay out of a lot of it, at least for a while. When we first settled into the new house, the first thing my father did was take a drive around town to show me around and explore it a bit for himself as well. The area was major forest and logging, even having some wild animals walking down the streets like it was nothing. Wait, I thought we were living in a beach town. <laughs> the first time I saw a herd of elk, I almost asked to stop the car just to get closer and see their massive size. Although, of course, I was warned that they were dangerous if they felt threatened, so that thought was squashed pretty quickly. Still, it was very fun, especially when we began to drive along the beach as well. I had come from a very large city, and it was the first time I'd seen the ocean with my own eyes. Feeling the sand under my feet was like nothing else. You got the forest right next to the ocean? I'm real confused now. This must be like Northern California or something. Or maybe an imaginary town. <laughs> it's completely made up. While I miss the city lights and sounds, I could get used to this. This isn't what you're here to hear, though. Although perhaps I'm just alluding to the horrors that would soon come. On the first day of my new school, my father dropped me off and left so that he could make it to his new job as well and left me alone in an unfamiliar place. Thinking the obvious, I made my way to the office and told them my name. One of the office ladies had luckily already been told my situation and gave me my schedule before pointing me in the right direction. From the paper, it looked like math first and small town equaled small school, so it was easy enough to find the right door and step inside. The moment I did, a bunch of eyes were on me, and I was quickly feeling very small. Trying to keep my head down, I hurried to the teacher and showed her my schedule, and then she pointed me to an empty seat. It was still early morning, and the bell hadn't even rung yet, so I was sitting alone at a two-person table as the other students muttered amongst themselves. It was a good time to try and get my thoughts together and relax my nerves a little, so I pulled my backpack off and sat it next to me so I could pull out one of my journals. I usually like to draw or write some poetry to clear my mind, so as I looked around the room, I decided to draw one of the girls in the class. Just from her appearance, she was obviously a more popular one. Glitter on her eyelashes, crop top, and long brown hair pulled into a low braid. She was so focused on talking that she was staying still enough for me to start doodling and going off into my own world. I heard the bell ring, but... Being in the middle of my drawing, I didn't bother stopping quite yet, adding a few details that she didn't quite have, like deer antlers and three eyes. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's one way to get creative, isn't it? <laughs> but by the time I added those, I was drawing someone that basically didn't exist at all. From the corner of my eye, I saw a guy sit down next to me, but I didn't really look up until a smell hit me, and I took a small glance. It was one of those... I'm not looking, but I am definitely looking type glances. The guy next to me didn't fit many of the neckbeard stereotypes, mind you. Aside from the smell, he was actually fairly attractive, but perhaps it was an acquired taste. <laughs> His long black hair was worn long, and he had glasses along with a very slender frame. At first, he didn't seem to particularly notice me as the teacher got up to actually start teaching. Please don't call me out, please... Just let me quietly exist, I begged, in my own mind, but like a roach, my hopes were crushed. Teacher, it looks like we have a new face here. If you'd like to introduce yourself, 
She attempted, she, damn it, <laughs> she's Arnold again. Arnold in a wig. <laughs> she attempted to urge me to speak, but everyone was staring. And after a few moments of trying to find my voice, I swallowed and just gave a wave without even looking up. I gave only my name before keeping quiet once more, which thankfully the teacher took as the end of it and began writing on the board. Now, I was never very good at math, but being in a new school, I wanted to at least try and pay attention. It wasn't long, though, before I felt a poke, and I looked over at the guy who looked like the human reincarnation of one of the blind mice. When I finally looked at him, it was impossible to notice that he wasn't actually wearing glasses, but just very, very tinted sunglasses that covered almost half of his face. Could he even see with those things on? <laughs> I didn't want to be rude and ask about them. It really wasn't my place to say anything, after all. But they were the sort of sunglasses you might see on a kid trying to replicate what they thought cool might be. Or like you took one of those disposable roll-up shades that you get from the eye doctor. Man, those do look pretty sweet, don't they? <laughs> I'm gonna go with the eye doctor tomorrow just to get me a pair. <laughs> I've never been to an eye doctor. Maybe I should. Anyways... I'll call him Mousebeard for that reason. Mouse. So, you do. Where are you from? While the smell was getting to me a bit, I did try to be nice. OP. Nevada. Y you ever been there? Mouse. No, but that sounds neat. You Las Vegas girl. I gave a small laugh at that, but quickly shook my head. OP. The capital, actually. I never went down to Vegas. Mouse. Las Vegas isn't the capital. <laughs> uh, after a minute of telling him that no, it was not. <laughs> we were swiftly shushed by the teacher as she set down worksheets for everyone. I had to move my notebook to pull the paper in front of me, which apparently, when moving the book to the side, was Mouse's okay to just look at whatever he wanted. He had to take his sunglasses off to look at my drawing, and while I felt it was a bit rude to just look through someone else's stuff without asking, I didn't particularly mind either. It wasn't like I had anything to hide, and it was actually flattering when I had people that enjoyed my stuff. Mouse, who's this? He gestured to my newest drawing, a little bit confused. OP, I'm not sure. It started out as that girl over there, but it just kind of took a life of its own. I nodded to the girl on the other side of the room, and he suddenly seemed very smug. Mouse. <laughs> you like mood? Uh, she's kind of a bitch. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mince words. OP, I wouldn't say that I like her. She was just kind of there. Why do you say that, though? Do you know her? Mouse snorted before resting his elbow on the desk. I couldn't tell if it was a pity snort or an amused one. Either way, with how forced it was, I think he might have actually shot something out of that cave. <laughs> Mouse. Obviously, she's my older sister by a year. Why is that obvious, bro? <laughs> I didn't know it during that time, but since the school was so small, the classes were mixed year. So all four years would go to the same classes, with a simple, oh, that ended the topic pretty shortly. There wasn't really much else I could ask, so I simply continued to work on the classwork while Mouse ignored the sheet and continued to browse in my notebook. As long as he was quiet, at least. Well, the quiet was not lasting. It had been nearly a half an hour, and I'd only done about five questions because Mouse kept poking me for my attention and to explain my drawings or poems. I could tell some of the other students around us were also getting annoyed, so I tried to keep my words short, but he just would not get the hint. Finally, he found the page with one of my venting poems, which I had wrote when I was feeling angsty, and he poked me again. Mouse, what is this? OP, just an emo poem. It was inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. You can skip it, that was just a venting thing. Mouse, the Raven Guy. <laughs> that explains why it was so familiar. Didn't Simpsons do a Halloween episode on him? Ah, the Simpsons. Nevermore. <laughs> <laughs> While I knew what he was talking about, it was admittedly a bit insulting, 
that a poem that I was actually a bit proud of was being prodded at so much. Deep within the ivory tower, shrouded in whispered words of sorrow, seeping scarlet down the floor, and wails of nevermore. When I didn't respond, Mouse was quiet for another minute while looking at the drawing that went with it, and then of course he freaking poked me again. By this point I was getting a bit annoyed and my leg was starting to hurt with all this poking, but I bit my tongue on wanting to snap at the dude. Mouse, what, what does this poem even mean? Did, did you rip him off or something? OP, I don't know what it means. It just sounded cool at the time. You should start on your worksheet, dude. The bell is going to ring soon. I looked at the clock in a desperate attempt to tell him that I wanted to stop talking, but he shrugged, obviously not taking the signs. Mouse, well, why does it matter? One worksheet isn't going to kill me. Anyway, you're new. Why are you doing work on the first day? <laughs> it's not going to count to your grade. <laughs> Something in me wanted to snap, but rather than doing just that, I raised my hand to alert the teacher that he would not stop bothering me, and Mouse was moved to the front of the class, finally giving me some peace. At least for now, but if I know beers, he's going to come back around. Very next day, he's going to be sitting next to you, poking you some more. Probably twice as much. <laughs> when the bell rang, I moved to my next class, where luckily, it seemed I didn't share it with Mouse. The simple day was short-lived, though, by the time lunchtime came around. When it was my turn to get my food, the lunch lady prompted me to put on my student number, which I didn't know yet, so she had to write down my name for me to come back to later, causing it to take an extra minute or so to get my freaking food and sit down. By the time I finally had my food, the lunchroom was so full, I made the choice to walk around the school and just eat as I explored some. For the most part, it was a normal high school, but students seemed to be allowed to sit anywhere they wanted during lunch, so I simply returned to the math classroom and sat in a small corner, watching the other students talk or play card games while they ate. Nobody bothered me, for the most part, until a familiar face entered the classroom and we made eye contact. Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> I'll end that for now, but if it's actually liked, I will continue this little project. As I said in the beginning, this isn't actually real, but does it sound like it is so far? Absolutely, I would say that it is. It doesn't hit any of the tropes, you know? Dude's not sitting there shoveling down Doritos and Mountain Dew or anything like that, so... <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, it seems like a very legitimate neckbeard story. If you hadn't told me, then I probably would have believed 100% that it was. No cap. <laughs> the beautiful part about, you know, neckbeard fanfics is that you can go over the top. You told everybody that it's fake, so you can make him shovel down Doritos and Mountain Dew and fart and poop on himself if that's what it takes to get the laugh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that one little bit. I'm big into beard fix, boy. <laughs> but Mouse definitely does seem like a, a legitimate character. I'd be interested to see where this story goes if you do feel inclined to write some more. It's not quite as over the top as some of the Neckbeard fanfics that have been shared like in the Discord server just for funsies, but I do enjoy it in its own right, and to me it looks 100% legitimate, <laughs> honestly. But now we shall continue on to a story that is legitimate, <laughs> and that is the tale of Richard, the ramen-eating nihilist. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but I guess we will pass our judgment on it right now. High school neckbeard eats ungodly amounts of ramen, preaches nihilist philosophy, and plays with katanas. <laughs> <laughs> and the username, Richard the Neckbeard? That's beautiful, man. <laughs> Recently, I'd been watching Red X's Neckbeard videos. Oh, yeah. The bearded butter. That's what we're doing around here. <laughs> and those videos inspired me to tell the tale of my Neckbeard classmate in high school. I'll call him Richard. Dick. <laughs> but that's not his real name. I think it fits him pretty well. Richard was certainly strange, but unlike many neckbeards, he wasn't actually malicious. He never stalked or harassed women or anything like that. The worst he ever got was annoying and condescending. A low-level beard, but that's still a beard. <laughs> I'll take it. 
Richard was reasonably neckbeardy in appearance. He was about 5 foot 8 and on the chubbier side, but by no means overweight. He had short, dirty blonde hair, which I'm pretty sure he cut himself. Yes, I mean both dirty blonde the color, and also dirty and blonde as two separate descriptions. <laughs> His face was oily and bespeckled with acne. Bespeckled? <laughs> That is $10 wood if I ever heard one. <laughs> Nicely played, OP. He didn't shave, which left him with a wispy mustache and a few patchy hairs on his chin. Richard had no particular body odor, but he sometimes smelled faintly of spoiled cheese. <laughs> Dick cheese. <laughs> he wore the same black hoodie every single day, which was often stained with food of some sort. Sometimes a whitish stain would appear on the stomach of the hoodie as well. Mmm, mysterious. <laughs> Been drinking milk, Richard? Man milk. <laughs> Richard completed the outfit with sweatpants and the same pair of sneakers. I heard a rumor once that Richard had told one of his friends that he once went for four weeks without changing his pants or his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you want to spread around, Richard. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but knowing Richard, I do think that this is entirely possible. I'm also pretty sure he wore the same sneakers every day for four years. Well, no shame in that. I, I did that. <laughs> and by the end of high school, they were basically falling apart. I should add that Richard's family was by no means wealthy, but they definitely had enough money for him to get new clothes. I guess he just didn't want them, or probably didn't ask for them, and the parents didn't take it upon themselves. You see, there's always a sad story a little bit underneath all of these beard tales. I wish I knew more about Richard's home life, man. I guarantee you that would generate some sympathy. At lunch, Richard would sit with three or four of his friends. They were all varying degrees of weird, but Richard was certainly their leader, and the most neckbeardy among them. <laughs> Every day, Richard ate three or four bowls of instant ramen, sometimes augmented with Doritos or Cheetos. <laughs> I never saw him drink Mountain Dew, but he did enjoy Red Bull and Coca-Cola. Oh, shit, man. Why you gotta do Red Bull and Coca-Cola like that? Can't you stick to the beer drinks? <laughs> Get off the things that I like. Stop liking the things that I like. Ah... <laughs> uh, Richard was neckbeardy in not only his appearance, but also his personality, of course, because that is where true beardery comes from. Now, I know a lot of neckbeards think of themselves as very intelligent, euphoric, if you will, and I will, <laughs> but Richard actually was very smart, legitimately. He took a lot of AP math and science classes, and he always had very good grades, the problem was that Richard would rub his intelligence in everyone's face. When someone got the answer wrong in class, Richard would make a comment like, Ugh, I do that, or you, you should have called on me. On the other hand, when Richard got a question wrong, which admittedly wasn't very often, he would get very angry and either argue with the teacher or just sit there and sulk in his seat. One time, he actually made our history teacher flip through several textbooks to prove that Richard was wrong about some stupid random fact. <laughs> See, he bases his whole personality on his intelligence, which luckily he is actually intelligent, but yeah, why you got to try and rub it in people's face like that? That ain't cool. Richard was also a proud atheist and looked down on anyone who was religious. Now I'm going to take a minute here and say that every time I mention atheism being linked to neck beardery in a video. There's somebody in the comments who absolutely hates that. <laughs> but the truth is, it's not atheism by itself that designates neck beardery. It's the attitude towards people who don't necessarily believe the same thing that you believe. We've seen religious neck beards too. So I think that is like a big missing piece of the puzzle that I'm not sure if people necessarily get, especially from some of the comments that I get. But it's all in the attitude, is, is what I mean to say. And we shall probably see that in this story right now. <laughs> Richard thought that anyone who believed in God was a complete idiot. See? 
and he would enlighten them with his scientific wisdom. Richard called religion Bronze Age fairy tales and would go on rants about thermodynamics and uh, the Big Bang to his unfortunate victims. <laughs> Richard was also obsessed with nihilism and Friedrich Nietzsche, and would sometimes say edgy nihilist quotes like, Pain and happiness are equally meaningless. <laughs> I know Ramtide loves Nietzsche too, but he's not a douche about it. Another of Richard's favorites was Nietzsche's famous quote, God is dead. God remains dead, and, and we killed him. Looking back, I wonder if the reason that he refused to shave his mustache was that he was trying to secretly look like Nietzsche. I don't know, but it is just a thought that I had. <laughs> it was not only his looks and personality that made him beardy, but also his actions. Oh, that's a trifecta! <laughs> Richard and his weird friends got in trouble multiple times for sparring in the hallway or on the courtyard all while yelling, Hiya! and yelling at each other in Japanese. <laughs> or more accurately, making vaguely Japanese sounding noises at each other. <laughs> oh, I love the thought of that. That always tickles me pink, man. You think Richard watch anime? I think Richard watch anime. <laughs> Indeed, Richard truly seemed to think that he was descended from ninjas. Or maybe samurai. I'm not actually sure. To be perfectly clear, his family was Polish. <laughs> he wasn't even remotely Asian. One of my friends lived near Richard, and he said that he walked past Richard's house one day and saw Richard and all of his friends in ninja costumes fighting with plastic swords. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you enjoy it, I ain't gonna crap on it, you know? He doesn't seem to be hurting anybody fighting with his plastic sword, but <laughs> I can't help it. It makes me giggle just a bit. As far as I'm concerned, in the privacy of your own home, do whatever you like. Is all this shit ridiculous? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but he really doesn't seem to be hurting anybody, so I can't come at him with, like, the impotent rage that I usually come at most neckbeards with. He's just kind of a silly, goofy guy. Honestly, part of me is starting to admire Richard <laughs> with his plastic swords. Like, he doesn't care what anybody else thinks, which I think is pretty awesome. At one point, Richard got an actual katana on Amazon. <laughs> and made YouTube videos of him in his backyard cutting water bottles and fruit and other things in half with said katana. I just looked as I'm writing this, and his videos are still up. I mean, I would post the link in a heartbeat if it didn't mean doxing him. There are several videos, but one particular video stands out in my mind. It features Richard standing behind a table in his ninja costume, holding his katana. <laughs> one of his friends places a watermelon on the table. Richard raises the katana above his head, and with a slow, Hah! he then pauses for a half second before swinging the katana down with a loud, Hi! <laughs> Splitting the watermelon in half. <laughs> so dramatic. Richard then sheathes his blade and bows deeply toward his fallen melon adversary <laughs> as a gong sound effect plays in the background. There are several others, but the sheer absurdity of this one makes it stand out to me in a big way. <laughs> Unlike many neckbeards, Richard did not in fact harass women. I don't think he ever had a conversation with any of his female classmates, except for when he was assigned to work with them. There is one notable thing that happened involving female classmates, though. Some of the girls in the school noticed that more than once, they would receive notifications at 1 or 2 a.m. that Richard had liked photos of them in bikinis on Instagram. <laughs> okay, so it is harassment. It's like a very subtle form of harassment. <laughs> One can only wonder what he was doing looking at bikini photos of his classmates on Instagram at 1 or 2 a.m. There are some more things that Richard did that I'm not really sure how to fit them into a cohesive story, so I will just make a list of bullet points featuring notable events. 
Richard was caught watching Japanese porn on his phone in history class, sophomore year. <laughs> uh, not the time nor the place, Richard. <laughs> Richard apparently thought that Australia was in Europe. <laughs> not Austria. Australia. How? How? He's got to be American, right? <laughs> I hate to say it, but Americans are the ones that don't know their geography. <laughs> For the most part. Richard had a job at a local fat... Fat food. <laughs> at a local fast food place. But got fired for calling a customer a mongoloid. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> you can't just say things like that, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Richard mixed some chemicals in the chemistry lab and started a small fire. <laughs> when questioned, he said, It was an accident. But I am 95% sure that he knew exactly what he was doing. Nobody could prove anything, though, so he didn't get in trouble. Is he, a, is he an arsonist? <laughs> he probably did know what he's doing with like his AP science classes and stuff like that, but... Yeah, I guess ignorance is a good excuse, at least for some things. <laughs> Ultimately, Richard and I graduated high school, and I haven't seen him since. I just checked on social media, and Richard just finished his master's degree in electrical engineering this year. Like I said, he actually is really smart, so that doesn't actually particularly surprise me. His profile picture, though, is a picture of a ninja, so... <laughs> Maybe he hasn't grown up all the way quite yet. Final designation, a cross between the Beardus Gladius and Beardus Sinopitus with some qualities of the Beardus Appropriati. Well, it seems to me like you got this guy nailed down. You know, the, de the designations are right on point and everything. <laughs> you love to see it. This is absolutely a great story. He is a low-level beard, but something tells me he... Might be harassing women online that you don't necessarily know and things like that, especially given his behavior on Instagram in the in the wee hours of the morning, you know? That does not bode well. <laughs> I am glad that he's able to make his life happen and stuff. He's got his master's degree. He's not a failure, as most beards seem to be, but I don't think he's ever asked himself the question, am I a neckbeard? How can I change things? So I don't know, he definitely classifies as beardy. I want to say low level, you know, but maybe there is some creepy stuff going online. He tried to light a fire in the chemistry lab, like... <laughs> There's some hinky stuff about this dude that uh, probably needs more attention. Unfortunately, I don't know that we will ever get any answers, but it's definitely fun to uh, kick back and, and ruminate about some of this stuff. <laughs> He was so vocally down bad. I was just down, down bad. The perverted folly of Downbeard. Hello everyone, it's me, Cake Jerry. That's a different Jerry <laughs> for the uninitiated. <laughs> uh, God, I love how Cake Jerry has become a meme. It's just beautiful. Who, who would have thought one of my Patreon subscribers would become a meme in himself? <laughs> Let not my edgy Reddit username deceive you. The ataxic one. That doesn't have quite the same ring as Cake Jerry. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I've come to share a rather unique neckbeard experience from my time working in fast food. Oh, bless you. Retail is not easy, but fast food, man, that is the toughest of the tough. I say unique because... This guy doesn't exactly fit the criteria of a neckbeard, to the point where he might not even count as a neckbeard at all. Oh, we will be the judges of that, sir. <laughs> he isn't interested in any nerd interests, as far as I'm aware, and he doesn't have the condescending pseudo-intellectual euphoria of an enlightened atheist. However, his appearance, his seeming lack of social awareness, his refusal to own up to his own mistakes and accept them in a dignified manner, and his shameless and depraved hypersexuality, or at least his lack of sense to not tell others about it without consent, make him, at the very least, neckbeard adjacent. <laughs> well, honestly, I think you got this nailed down to a T. You've been around the channel long enough, you know what a neckbeard is. <laughs> 
And while I won't say he ticks all of the boxes, that's not what it takes. Just tick a majority of the boxes and congratulations. Here's your neckbeard crown. Go take a shower. <laughs> he was so vocally down bad <laughs> that it surpassed all conceivable measurements, going beyond even down atrocious or down horrendous. And thus, we have granted him the title of Downbeard. I'm sorry if this total lack of adherence to the strict definition is an affront to neckbeard scholars everywhere, but I don't give a damn. <laughs> it's not an exact science, okay? I gotta be completely honest with you. I don't think anybody is offended, at least not at this point. Although if we get to the end of the story and he's basically a Chad and you're describing him as a neckbeard, then I'm gonna have to roast you a little bit, you know? I've been dying to release this story from the depths of my memories, and hopefully this trauma serves as some entertaining cringe content for you all. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for sharing. Sorry about the trauma, you know, great things uh, come with pain or something like that. Massive trigger warning, by the way. I will be describing in full detail all of the things that this neckbeard said. Uh-oh. <laughs> because the depravity of it is important to the story. And this will include some very sexual matters. One mention of severe animal abuse, although he didn't actually abuse an animal, so don't worry. One slight moment of racism and some borderline pedophilia. And when I say it's depraved, I fucking mean it. So read at your own risk. This may cost me the chance of hearing Red X read the story on his channel due to demonetization concerns, but if I tried to censor the story, then there wouldn't be a whole lot of story to tell. No, no, this is good practice, okay? I'm used to dodging these word hurdles. <laughs> Everything's gotta be great, I promise. For a quick rundown of his physical appearance, he definitely fits the criteria of a neckbeard. He didn't noticeably smell bad, but his facial hair and kinda creepy stare made him look eerily similar to the Coomer Wojak, but with the typical body size of a neckbeard. God damn, dude, Wojaks have totally taken the internet by storm in the past couple years. <laughs> I thought the meme would die, but it just doesn't. As we all know, it is the neckbeard on the inside that counts, t-shirt. <laughs> and for the first couple of weeks of working with him, it wasn't too bad. He was nice, didn't cause too much trouble, and he seemed legitimately passionate about his job. At worst, he was just a bit too hyper. The first point of contention was when he shouted something along the lines of, That's because the hospital has them on the best ship in town! Really loudly in the direction of the front counter. <laughs> when there was a customer standing right there. Our general manager had threatened to fire him if he wouldn't stop swearing, so apparently this was already a recurring issue at this point. I mean, to me, that just sounds like a statement of fact. To me. <laughs> The hospital does have the best shit. What do you want? Although I do get, you know, being professional. I don't want to bring my five-year-old into McDonald's and have him walk out saying, yeah, that's the best shit in town. <laughs> uh, yes, you're right, but you can't say it. You can't just say it. Uh, a few days after this, he was talking to other employees via the headset while he was on drive through and while his headset was connected to the drive through speaker, he said, Yeah, I'm your bitch. <laughs> ah, right when a car pulled into the drive through The customer didn't mind all that much about the incident, but our manager still had to write him up for it, since you obviously aren't supposed to swear at unsuspecting customers. Yeah, what if it was like a grandma rolling through the drive through That ain't good. <laughs> A write-up on its own is not the end of the world. At worst, Downbeard would basically just get a slap on the wrist, especially given the circumstances. But to Downbeard, this was the end of the goddamn world. He suddenly got paranoid and started ranting about how nervous he was about losing his job or getting his hours cut, which are all valid concerns but claiming that this job is the only thing supporting my family. <laughs> uh, oh, if that's true, that's sad, but I, I don't honestly think that's true. All while making a huge fuss about basically just a small write-up 
and saying, ah, I may as well just walk out and quit. <laughs> Seems kind of counterproductive. See, now you know the supporting the family thing is complete trash. It's just something he says to feel like a big man. But if you have the freedom to quit like that, then yeah. You either don't give a single damn about your family, or you're not actually the one that's supporting them. But we all already knew that. Moving on. He also kept begging the manager to call the general manager to ask him what would happen, which the manager reiterated several times that he couldn't do. And he even started to act shitty towards other employees who he thought were bad-mouthing him due to the write-up. <laughs> Uh, nobody cares about the write-up, bro. He ended up making the write-up worse for himself than it ever would have been had he not had a meltdown over it. But as mentioned earlier, all he got was a slap on the wrist, so he could have learned his lesson and just gotten off scot-free. But then he went and did the same exact thing again. He was on drive through again, <laughs> and was arguing with a 16-year-old employee for some stupid reason. One of the customers could hear the argument through the window, and she took it as him being rude to her, which led to her complaining to the manager, which led to yet another write-up for Downbeard. Is this a two strikes and you're out type of thing? <laughs> I hope he doesn't walk into this fast food establishment with an AK. <laughs> Go all postal. <laughs> Downbeard, having not learned his lesson, went into meltdown mode over the write-up again and became a nuisance over it. Of course, yet again. It was arguably even worse this time because he was doing this while we were in a major rush and he refused to go back to his position and was begging the manager to let him have a smoke break <laughs> while cars were wrapped around the freaking building. Just go in the walk-in. That's what everybody else does. <laughs> his behavior was so disruptive that it was causing me social anxiety from the general commotion that he was causing, and I could only assume that others felt the same. Once again, he made his write-up worse, but it was still only a slap on the wrist. What can I say? We were, and still are, desperate for staff. Yeah, because most people know, or at least assume, what it's like to work in a fast food establishment. I ain't never done it for a reason. I'll do anything else. I'll haul bricks. <laughs> Don't make me work at fast food. Uh, but all of this is just a filler arc compared to what comes next. This is where we learn how he got his name. This was during closing time, where it was only me, the manager from both of these incidents, and Downbeard. I was gathering cash drawers for the manager, which led to me making a joke about an ex-employee who, for convenience sake, I will name Stenchwench. <laughs> Uh, I love that name. I'll explain it in a second. She had thrown the cash drawers in a fit of rage, which was in reference to the incident that had gotten her fired. To put the following events into perspective, Stenchwench is a legbeard of nuclear proportions. As obvious by her name, she did not smell good. <laughs> she was extremely unhygienic, lazy, whiny, and just outwardly unpleasant to everyone around her, and that is only the tip of the iceberg. I should get around to making a post about her, if I can unrepress enough memories about her to make one, but for now I'm just describing her to add some context to this story. Upon mention of her name, Downbeat turns to us and goes, Wait, did you guys say stench wench? Is it that the bitch that used to work at the McDonald's and the local gas station? Uh, yeah? Why? I asked. I would just love to titty fuck that. <laughs> uh, what the hell? <laughs> God, that got me good. It came out of left field. <laughs> he said this with the confidence that few could ever match. The manager and I both had to do a double take. This guy was shamelessly sexually attracted to stench wench and was blurting it out to us without any restraint. Keep in mind as I continue that Downbeard has a wife and a kid. Oh, the beards are reproducing. And the poor wife, that poor woman, why would you put yourself through this? Just leave! I just legitimately hate cheaters, dude. Even in theory, even as like a silly haha -ha joke. It's not a joke. You're disrespecting yourself and your wife. Clean your act up. 
<sighs> and with this, he went on a tangent of horniness <laughs> that absolutely nobody had asked for, listing off just about any female that he could think of that we might have been familiar with. To point out a few notable moments, he said he wanted to grudge fuck one of our female managers that he didn't like, and he said he wanted to have sex with one of our former female managers because he never tried chocolate before. Oh, <laughs> God. The fetishization, the casual racism. Just what a prize this beard is, isn't he? What an absolute specimen. <sighs> In the middle of his tangent... Downbeard decided to bring up a news story he read on Facebook about someone's wife walking in on some guy while he did unsightly acts on a pit bull. What? <laughs> I have no idea why that was included in the tangent. But trust me, I totally wanted to hear about it while I did my tasks for the night. Yeah, totally. Interesting. Awesome. Talking about degeneracy will definitely make you a more interesting person. Aw, oh, crap. I feel like I stabbed myself in the foot on that last sentence. <laughs> uh, uh, this one detail is honestly so gross that if you aren't certain that you can handle it, just skip to the next paragraph and spare your stomach. This specific part warrants an extra warning. I'll wait a minute for people that want to skip this part of the video to skip this part of the video. Just 20, 30 seconds. That should do it. <laughs> you ready? He shared one of his sexual encounters where he was doing anal, and the girl he was screwing took a shit right in the middle of intercourse. <laughs> and he just kept going regardless. <laughs> uh, totally seems like something he would do. And for some reason, he just told us this, as if it wasn't incredibly gross. But I guess he just thought it was funny or something. Now, I have a warped sense of humor, but... There's a time and a place, and uh, the work environment is not it. <laughs> Don't try to impress your manager with some story about getting poop on your dick. <laughs> the social awareness, my god. But the crowning moment of this cursed night was when he decided that this was a smart thing to tell us in full confidence. You know... <laughs> For a 16 year old, that one co worker has a real nice body. Ugh. I could not visibly hide the cringe on my face when I heard this. Downbeard was totally confused as to why we didn't agree with this. Are you telling me that once she turned 18, you wouldn't let her slob on your knob? Slob <laughs> on your knob. Uh, oh, God. The saddest part of this entire story is the fact that this subhuman is reproduced. Oh, God. What's his wife like, I wonder? No self-respect, I'll tell you that much. <sighs> no, no, we, we would, would not. not. <laughs> the manager and I both responded to this supposedly irrefusable offer. And this was the note that the night thankfully ended on. <laughs> he ended up going on similar tangents at least twice for the remainder of his time there, including one time where he did it in front of an open drive through window, which a customer was parked right next to. Oh, lovely. Was that the third write-up? Is he gone now? <laughs> Please let it end. The tale of Downbeard has a rather anticlimactic end, although that's probably for the better, let's be real. <laughs> he ended up getting a job at a local restaurant while still keeping his fast food job, but when the general manager caught him calling off work to work at the other place, he was quickly fired. And that is hopefully the last that I will ever see of Downbeard. I don't know if he was truly a pedophile, or at the very least, one that would actually put a child into harm's way. All I hope is that he's too pathetic to be able to do so, even if he did want to. So, thanks for reading through all this, if any of you actually did. The story is probably too much for some to stomach, and that is understandable, but for those of you who chose to share my pain, <laughs> I can never thank you enough. In this small, shitty rural town that I live in, there are enough degenerate cretins that I could write quite a few posts about them. So if this post is well received enough, and or I feel motivated enough, then I'll be sure to write those as well. And Red X, if you do decide to read this, I am so sorry. <laughs> you good, bro. 
nobody got assaulted. I mean, it's a creepy conversation, but that's all it is, is a text post about a conversation. So I think we're safe, despite the uh, objectionable subject matter. <laughs> Feel free to censor or skip whatever parts you want if you do read it. Either way, I would be extremely stoked to hear you read this. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, and have a good day, night, whatever. So I have no doubt in my mind that this guy qualifies as pure neckbeard. Delusions of grandeur? He's got them. Self-entitlement? Yep, got that too. And those are the two biggest boxes. It can all be summed up with the one sentence where he's describing what he wants to do to these girls who honestly would probably never have any sort of association with him. <laughs> I'm sure Cake Jerry doesn't even want an association with this guy. It was just uh, unfortunate timing, I suppose, that you ran into this fellow. And I gotta be really, really surprised that he's able to find not just one job, but two jobs. Multiple job. And both of them are in the food service industry. <laughs> uh, I'm never fucking eating out again, bro. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> this is so terrifying. The actual conversation isn't even what gets to me the most in this story. It's like the subtext. This guy works in food service. He has a poor wife and, uh, and an arguably poor child, depending on how much of uh, his genetic material she's carrying. This is like one of the only cases where I would hope that the wife stepped out on the husband because he doesn't even view women as people. He's just like, oh yeah, I'd like to try some chocolate. It's like, what the hell? They're not rainbow boxes on a checklist. They're friggin' people, man. And then there's the fact that he would, you know, in theory, chase this 16 year old around, but I think OP's right in the assessment that he's too bitch to actually ever do it, you know? He's just somebody he likes to talk about, and apparently he wants to talk about it with his coworkers, which is about the weirdest thing ever, the worst place to do it. I have no idea what is going on in this dude's head, nor do I want to. <laughs> Just completely whacked out. I mean, he didn't think that he's a werewolf or something like that, but he's definitely one of the stranger neckbeards that we've seen on the channel, at least with his openness and sexual proclivities as they've been laid out before us. Who boy. I hope that you guys will let me know if you'd like to hear some more from Cake Jerry. I know that I would, if he can unrepress those memories. You know, take your time dredging them up. I know that kind of stuff can hurt. But I would indeed like to hear it eventually. He confidently explained to me how he learned that he liked butt play. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a liberal arts class, all right. You communist robot. Philosobeard. Possibly related to Philosoraptor. <laughs> Wherever he falls on the scale of evolution, he was definitely a Tinder experience for the ages. Welcome, readers. Come one and all to my tale of woe and excessive cringe. <laughs> also, sorry about formatting issues. I am but a humble fool. I definitely like the writing style already. <laughs> this is an experience that was surreal to me at the time. Now it's just physically painful from the secondhand embarrassment. I've told many of my friends and classmates about this, and they almost can't believe it. But some did know this individual and did understand what the hell I was talking about. I guess that's enough for the introduction. I'm known to be a bit verbose. Ooh, $10 word, but I know what it means this time. <laughs> Let's get into the cast of this adventure. OP B, at the time 18 years old, in my first year of college. I was a history major with a double minor in art and philosophy. Physically, I'm a pretty average liberal arts student. Brown hair with green sections, tall, average build, and I usually wear dark clothes. Inferno was a guy in a couple of my classes. He was a philosophy major. At the time, he was 19 years old, average college guy. We are drinking buddies, and we study together. Indeed, great friends. Ginger and Smokey, two more classmates, both philosophy majors, both about 21 to 24 years old. Ginger is a redhead, hence the name... Smokey has dark curly hair and smokes a lot of grass. <laughs> God, I miss grass, man. <laughs> Someday we'll be reunited. <laughs> Philosobeard, of course, is our antagonist. I deliberated on what nickname I would give this specimen. I thought about calling him by some philosopher's name, but I didn't want to insult any great thinkers by making that comparison. <laughs> 
greasy guy, dark hair and dark clothes, about 23 to 24 years old. I don't remember any distinct aroma, but he certainly did not take great care of himself. He was, of course, a self-proclaimed philosopher. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, let's get going. This story starts my very first semester of college. Ah, what a way to be welcomed. <laughs> it was around October 2018. A bunch of my friends were taking their first journeys into the land of Tinder, and I decided to follow along. I had fun looking through people, met some interesting folks, but nothing quite stuck out as being overly strange. One day, I was sitting with some friends, and I saw this individual. None of his photos were very clear, and they were all kind of cryptic. Images of an average height, dark-haired man just standing in dark rooms with dark filters over each picture. Insecurity. <laughs> That's all that is. He's trying to be edgy, but he's just insecure. The bio had something equally strange, also giving details about his job. Philosophy student at my university. This was Philosobeard. I thought the pictures and bio were funny. I mean, it's Tinder. I wasn't taking it seriously. And I swiped right. Oh no! Bro, this is your life! It's ending one minute at a time. <laughs> Don't spend it with Philosobeard. We matched. God knows he probably hasn't gotten any other matches. <laughs> he messages me and we chat for a bit. I thought he was a little strange. And he definitely took himself way too seriously. And then he tries to guess my favorite color. He guessed wrong. My favorite color is gray. Technically a shade, whatever, I don't care. That wouldn't be too odd, but then he follows up with, My favorite color is purple. You know, purple and gray would go well together. What? <laughs> First of all, no, they would not, in my opinion. Second of all, what the hell does that even mean? We stopped talking to each other shortly after that. <laughs> does that mean that you stopped replying? Also, I really don't know if purple and gray go well together. I'm uh, fairly colorblind, so I generally try not to inject myself into conversations that revolve around color. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time that I called something that was red, brown, and my family still laughs at me about it to this day. <laughs> so now I've become insulated on that. Don't ask me about colors, period. A couple of days go by after we stop messaging, and I was scrolling through my feed when I noticed that Philosophyard had changed his Tinder bio. As I stated, it had previously read, student at our university, but now it said, Philosopher! <laughs> Christ, this guy, this buffoon, really thought himself to be the next Camus or Diogenes. Bro, there will never be another Diogenes, I don't care. <laughs> the one and only. And yeah, people lie about their jobs all the time, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's no big deal. Especially on Tinder, right? We're not taking it seriously, right? <laughs> Obviously, OP didn't take it seriously. She just said, ugh. He thinks he's going to be the next great thinker. Rolled her eyes and went about her day. That's a, that's a perfectly good response. Months went by in a flash. Then I was done with my first semester of college. January 2019 rings in the start of the spring 2019 semester. And with that, a whole host of five new classes to take on. I'd spent my morning at my first lecture, communications, and then in the afternoon, I had my first philosophy class, elementary logic. Elementary logic is basically the closest to a science or math class that I had to take. I looked at a bunch of letters and symbols and told you whether or not the argument made sense. Sounds like it would be good for programming, too. I was waiting for the classroom door to open when someone approaches me. Guess who? If you said Philosophy Beard, you're wrong! It's Inferno. <laughs> he walks up to me and introduces himself. Hey, my name's Inferno. I think I saw you in my communications class this morning. Turns out, we did have that class together. We were assigned to different group sections, though. We get to talking, basically getting to know each other, when the door to the class finally opens, and we all walk inside. Inferno and I sit towards the back of the classroom, furthest from the door. The desks were in a sort of horseshoe shape, with chairs on either side. 
Oh, so they set it up like a third grade classroom. <laughs> That's a bad sign. <laughs> the professor stood at the front and led the class. Ginger and Smokey came to sit next to us and we all got talking. Inferno leans over to me and whispers about how hot he thinks Ginger is. Bro, I want her to put a finger in my butt. <laughs> 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 yeah, don't knock it till you try it, I guess. <laughs> I looked over at him wide-eyed and responded, Inferno, what? He confidently explained to me how he learned that he likes butt play. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a liberal arts class, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, I quickly learned that this semester was going to be interesting. At three, the professor starts class. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone walk in and sit at the last open chair next to the door. I look over, and to my absolute horror, it's Philosophyard. At least, I'm pretty sure it is. He looks mostly like the pictures. The professor performs roll call, and when she gets to my name, I raise my hand, and Philosophyard looks right at me, a spark of recognition flinting in his eyes. Fuck, <laughs> he sees me. Don't move. <laughs> the sight is based on movement. <laughs> the professor called his name, and at that moment, I knew. Damn it. I leaned over to Inferno and told him, Dude, I matched with that guy on Tinder. Oh, go get your mans. Inferno, no, that is not my mans. A little note, I'd actually started dating my boyfriend right around this time, Funnily enough, we met on Tinder. <laughs> Probably why you should take it at least halfway seriously. But then again, I'm a stick in the mud, you know? <laughs> the class goes by without a hitch. We just went over the syllabus and had our first lecture. But the whole time, I am acutely aware of Philosophyard looking at me. I would occasionally smile at him with that, I'm only smiling because otherwise I'm a rotten bitch who hates nice burp men kind of way. <laughs> Has he proven himself to be nice or smart, or he just sees himself that way? Because honestly, you don't owe anybody anything. If he wants to think you're a rotten bitch, like, that's that's his problem, isn't it? <laughs> no skin off my nose, bro. I will be just as evil as you need me to be. Anyways, class ends, finally, and Inferno and I walk out together. In front of us, I watched his philosophy beard be lined out, and then stood to the side of the door. Ugh, he's waiting for me. <laughs> well, I braced myself. Fortunately, I did still have Inferno with me. We were walking out together. I'm aware that Philosophyard is now right behind us. He's waiting for an inn. Damn it! I really do not want to talk to him! Inferno looks over his shoulder and sees Philosophyard. He then looks at me with an impish smile. I must have been beet red because I was so flustered in a bad way if you couldn't extrapolate that. <laughs> well, B, I'll see you later. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> Damn it, Inferno. Please don't do this. He, for some reason, thought that I liked this beard. I hadn't mentioned to him that I wasn't talking to this dude. In fact, I was now a little unsettled. Shit. I was now trying to run out of the philosophy building as fast as I could without drawing undue attention to myself. <laughs> Just book it. Who cares? Set yourself free. Wipe your booty hole with that social contract. <laughs> it's useless. I reach the outside near the quad and I think I'm home free when I hear the eerie voice that I had never wanted to hear behind me. Hey, Apple's Malafera! And I freeze, dead in my tracks, as if I had died right where I stood. Apis Malafera is the full name of the species of western honeybees. Philosophyard, in fact, used my full name. Now, my first name was on my Tinder, but most people just call me B, so hearing him say my legal name was a bit jarring. Bro, I told you, you're his one and only match. Of course he looked you up. This is what happens when you swipe freakos on Tinder. <laughs> I steal myself, put on the nicest face I can, 
Oh, hey, Philosophy-eared. Uh, I didn't realize we were going to have this class together. What a coincidence. I said coincidence. <laughs> so he responds, I don't think it was a coincidence. <laughs> Shit. Did this guy manage to log into my registration service or maybe just otherwise find out my classes in order to sign up with me? Was he actually stalking me? Oh god, I am screwed. I better hope that my loved ones know that I do care for them. I need to pray to any higher being. Maybe Plato's form will take pity upon my poor soul and save me for eternity. I'm too in my own thoughts when I respond, What do you mean not a coincidence? I'm nervous. No, Apis Malifera. There he goes with my full name again. I, I think it's fate. God damn it. He cannot be serious. <laughs> oh, but he is. You could practically replace the species name with a Milady, and it would feel exactly the same. I look into his eyes, and there is not a hint of insincerity in them. In fact, they're quite dead. Kind of like those eyes. <laughs> Fate, huh? My voice might have cracked at this point, as did my sanity. Yeah. He then begins to wax philosophically, <laughs> wax, <laughs> about how our souls were intertwined in the cosmos and we are meant to be together. I thought I was mishearing him. Or maybe he was joking. <laughs> I know you want him to be joking so bad, OP, but he's not. <laughs> Reader, maybe you think he was joking. I don't. <laughs> but he fucking wasn't. I wanted to cry. He then asked me what I'm doing after class, and I told him it was my designated nap time, and that I had to go back to my dorm. Alone. <laughs> we parted ways and I made sure that he wasn't following me. I texted Inferno, telling him off for leaving me alone with Philosobeard, and I regaled him with what I just told all of you. He apparently thought that my smiles to Philosobeard were flirty, and that I wanted to be left alone. He even called Philosobeard my boyfriend. I told him that I very much did not want that, and I mentioned to him that I had a boyfriend that was not a neckbeard philosopher. The rest of the semester goes by, a couple of times, Philosophier tried to sit next to me and share my textbook with me. <laughs> textbooks were used in classwork for examples and exercises. Ginger and Smokey started sitting next to me to box out Philosophier. Ah, oh, bless them. You do need, like, a few good friends. You know, two or three. Anything beyond that, it's just extravagance. <laughs> I remember he had mentioned to me that everyone in the class was so young. To me, an 18-year-old... He was 23. Not really a big age difference, but with everything else added in, yeah, it made me uncomfortable. Also, if he bothered to listen to our classmates, he would know that the average age of the students was about 24 to 25. Uh, older than him. Well, this makes me theorize that a beard's field of vision and hearing is about like 20 to 30 degrees. <laughs> they have very, very narrow eyesight. We will study more on that, of course. Philosophyard eventually stopped trying to talk to me, thank God, and he also stopped showing up to class. Awesome. <laughs> I was fucking relieved. I ended up with an A in the class and made it to the dean's list. Philosophyard, of course, failed the class because he's an idiot. <laughs> I told a few of the other philosophy majors about him. Apparently, several of them had stories with this guy where he would ramble about shit with the cosmos and eldritch monsters in the universe and souls. Now, seemingly weird beliefs are generally not uncommon among philosophers or students or philosophy students. <laughs> but everyone thought that philosophers were truly bizarre and probably a drug-induced hallucination or a delusion. Also, I wasn't quite sure where to fit this little tidbit, but one time, when I was at one of the food courts on campus, Philosophyard walked in, saw me, and gave me that crazed smile that he had. I called a friend to try and look busy. <laughs> Good play. One more thing, I also had this guy's phone number, so I could view his Venmo history in my feed. 
It was weird, but honestly not that interesting, but I thought that I should mention it. Is that a thing? Can you only see incoming or outgoing? Is it like all OnlyFans stuff? I'm, <laughs> I don't know how Venmo works. <laughs> I'm old school. I use PayPal. Now, that is the end of my tale. If you made it through my word salad, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it. This story was a little bit painful for me to remember, but it's always a fun story to tell. I have some more stories about other beardos in my life that I can also share if anyone is interested. TLDR, met an intellectual beardo on Tinder. We ended up having a class together by fate of the cosmos. <laughs> So I'll start off by saying that I definitely enjoyed the story. Funny, well-written, and then I'll follow that up by saying that I think OP was kind of a jerk. <laughs> Just kind of stopped talking to him on Tinder, and then he tries to approach you after class because you you guys matched on Tinder, right? And try and, like, make something out of it, and OP's just like, Oh my god, no! <laughs> I can't believe he thinks purple and gray would go well together. Like, is that really the reason? Maybe she was a little creeped out by his, like, talk of fate and the cosmos. <laughs> Which I think would freak a lot of people that you just met out. But I don't know, man. Wouldn't it have been easier to just, like, tell him in very clear terms, I'm not interested? You could have also told Inferno, Hey, I matched with that guy on Tinder. I'm not interested in him. Please save me. <laughs> Communication's super important. I don't think I was as communicative when I was 18. Also, being a woman, I mean, I know telling a guy off, especially if they seem a little unbalanced, can be a scary thing. But you probably could have done that via Tinder, you know? Not just let the conversation trail off and have him wonder. You're like, oh, okay, well, it seems like we're not interested. Unmatch or something like that. I am trying to see it from both sides. I'm trying not to light OP up, but I do think it was kind of a jerk move. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Dude doesn't seem like that beardy to me. A little bit weird, a little bit introspective, but those things do not a beard make. Where's his delusions of grandeur? I didn't see any of that. I guess it could be argued that thinking that the cosmos has a grand design for this one little beardy boy on this little blue planet <laughs> could be somewhat of a delusion of grandeur. Well, how about the self-entitlement? You know, oh, he, he did try to talk to her after class and felt entitled to her attention. All right, maybe I'm wrong on this one. <laughs> now that I've thought it out, okay, okay, he's a beard. <laughs> but I still would have been more communicative, ended things on Tinder so that it wouldn't evolve into this or devolve into this as the case may be. Oh boy, definitely glad you had some friends to save your bacon and that, you know, he eventually dropped out of the class if indeed you were the reason that he was there. He might have actually had to take this class because other philosophy students knew him. And if he got like embarrassed or shamed out of the class, then I do have to feel like a little bit bad for him. You know what I mean? That's that's not cool. So I don't know. It's it's really a nebulous one in my view, but we can philosophize together in the comments if you would like. <laughs> Want some background noise? Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? A neckbeard tried to pick me up, and failed, and then shames me for being a teenage mother. Um, which I'm not. <laughs> That's the classic neckbeard MO, you know what I'm saying? They'll hit on a chick, and then she's like, I'm not interested, and he's like, whatever, whore. <laughs> like, what? Are you not seeing the lapse of, in logic there? Ah, good day, mates. Wow, coming right out with the Australianisms. All right, <laughs> I'm not gonna try to do that accent. This happened a couple of months ago, and I thought I'd share, just for the hell of it. I've been listening to Neckbeard stories for a few years now. Ooh, OG, oh way back before Red X was even a thing. <laughs> that includes Tim Tam Tom, Red X, oh, Vinci, and Fatal Walter are some of my favorites. Check out Moon Horse if you haven't, he's my boy. And yes, I do dig on Fatal Walter as well. I love hearing these stories, and they're great for background noise when drawing and doing homework. You want some background noise? Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Red X is here for you. I make noises with my mouth basically all the time. <laughs> to start off, first, I will give you some context, and then the cast list, as we do. I live in Australia, in a pretty small town surrounded by other towns. 
as towns are wont to be, <laughs> each about a 20-minute to an hour's drive apart from each other. The quote-unquote main town, this is basically the only town in Australia with this name, and I really don't want to give away my identity or where I live, is the town that has everything. A local Woolworths, clothing and toy shops, all the good stuff. I can't believe Woolworths still exists. What the fuck? <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a long time, man. I guess you learn something new every day. My aunt and my uncle just had their first baby this year, which is very important to this story. I see what ass going. Also, for a bit of COVID context, because I know I'll have one of those peckish pennies in the comments, or even narrating the story. <laughs> In Australian towns and states that aren't close to any hotspots, these places are a little more laid back with restrictions. Masks are optional. I usually wear one just to be safe. You have to use your phone to check into every single store that you enter. Head counts are done, and hand sanitizer is just a given at every shop entrance. Well, it sounds like they're doing some stuff. Masks optional kind of makes me go, ooh. <laughs> But yeah, I get it. Okay. I'm in the Philippines and they have severely mismanaged this thing, but we're not going to get into that right now. So, hey, good job, Australia. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> With that out of the way, we'll get into the cast. And of course, names have been changed to protect the innocent and the bearded. Lizzie, that's me, R.O.P. A 17-year-old, 5-foot-7-ish girl with dark hair and really into Jurassic Park slash World, Marvel, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Witcher, games, books, and show, video games, and Nickelback. Shoot me. <laughs> I forgot all about Nickelback, man. But this is how you remind me. <laughs> uh, holy shit. If you want a basic idea of exactly what I look like, Imagine Maisie Williams got the role of Lisbeth Salander. I don't know who either of these people are. I'm feeling really old, man. <laughs> I've been told I look a little like Maisie, and I dress like Lisbeth from the Swedish Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movies. All right, kind of getting uh, not like other girls vibes from that, but <laughs> thank you for sharing, I suppose. Lance is my boyfriend, 19 years old, 5 foot 9-ish bloke who reminds me a lot of Josh Dub. Again, I'm so old. <laughs> In terms of both looks and personality, he likes anime and video games and dairy, despite being lactose intolerant. I'm giving him the name from an anime that he likes. I don't remember what it was. Saws. Probably Pokemon. That's the only Lance I know. <laughs> Does he fart a lot? Does he poop in his pants? Because <laughs> he's lactose intolerant. Oh, God. I'm already giving OP so much shit, man. She's going to regret <laughs> hopping into the DMs. I'm sorry. Not really, though. Witcher beard is the beard of our tale. Age unknown. Height approximately 5 foot 11. Why does the beard get, like, the least amount of description? That's what we're all here for, isn't it? What the fuck? Give me some cringy beard description to sink my teeth into, for God's sake. Ah, I guess we'll get into it in the story. I hope. Squish, my beloved little cousin. At the time of writing this, she's a little over a month old. From the minute I met her, I fell in love with her. It was like finally getting the little sister I always wanted. Wait, don't we get uh, the interests of the beloved little cousin? Her interests include jingling car keys. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Mama Bear is my wonderful aunt. Great mom and a true soldier, if I've ever seen one. Interests include pumpkin spice lattes and Ugg boots. <laughs> I'm killing myself, man. Ugh, Daddy Bear is my awesome uncle. He's my mom's little brother and has always been like a second dad or an older brother to me. Just as amazing as his wife. Also enjoys pumpkin spice lattes and Ugg boots. <laughs> there are also two security guards. They uh, pretty much speak for themselves, and I think their interests probably include wishing they were a cop. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what's happened today. 
I'm coming out of the gate just giving everybody both barrels. I'm in quite a mood. <laughs> quite a mood indeed. And we'll see how that goes as we get into the meat of the story. I live in one of the smaller towns in the surrounding area where there is next to nothing to do. Besides watching cane trains and going to the tiny general store. So I think you can imagine when I heard that one of the nerd shops in the main town was having a little get together for cosplayers. I was pretty excited. I'm working on making better cosplays. So far, I only have Scarlet Witch from Age of Ultron, Lady Demistrachu from, <laughs> from Resident Evil Village, which I haven't played. That's like the big mommy vampire lady, I'm pretty sure. Hela from Thor Ragnarok, and Ciri from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. My nanny bought me a sewing machine for my 17th birthday this year. Bro, <laughs> you got a nanny? Alright, I ain't gonna go too hard on your OP. I've given you a lot of shit already. We gotta just roll past that one. And I saw it as a golden opportunity to make some of my own cosplays instead of paying hundreds of dollars on low-quality Halloween websites. Staya. What is that? It's like Spirit Halloween, but Russian? <laughs> yes, I dress like bottle of Stolik Noya. <laughs> ah, fuck. I wanted my cosplay to be well thought out for this event. Though it is supposed to be just a small thing, I still wanted to look professional. I'm actually really proud of my Scarlet Witch, since it was my first ever cosplay that I wore to 2019 Oz Comic Con. Only one person complimented my cosplay, but it meant a lot to me. So shout out to the fancy dress guy in front of me at the Haley Atwell photo line. Even though I do love Scarlet Witch, it was pretty simple. Lady Demestris you. <laughs> I still don't know how to say it, is my favorite, but I get a little insecure when cosplaying her in public because of my height. Yeah, I'm not nine feet tall, but it feels weird to cosplay as a canonically tall character when you're an average height teen. Yeah, you just gotta get some, like, lifts in your shoes or, like, stilts under the dress or something like that. There's ways around it. Let's get creative. That's what cosplay is all about, I assume. <laughs> I've never actually cosplayed. That isn't to say that I wouldn't, but it just seems like a lot of effort. I decided to go with Siri. I bought a white blouse that Nanny helped me alter with the sewing machine, a pair of leather pants that I glued studs to, a belt, some gloves, and a sheath. I think my favorite part was styling the wig. A lot of hairspray and bobby pins. Totally worth the sore back from hunching over the sewing machine, lol. Bro, this is a lot of backstory for a fucking beard tale, isn't it? <laughs> this could have been like two sentences. Hey, these are the cosplays I like. This is the cosplay that I went as. You know, I usually like long tales, but fuck. It's like <laughs> OP's just talking in circles. And of course, the nanny uh, helping out with the sewing machine. I'm skipping over that again. <laughs> That's strike two. If it comes up a third time, I can't resist any longer. Ugh, I decided to pack the cosplay into a bag on that day and make sure that it was the day that the get-together was because I'm weirdly paranoid like that. I made my way towards the store and inside I saw two familiar faces. My aunt and uncle were there, not dressed up or anything, just visiting the store. I ran up and almost tackled my uncle to the floor as I hugged him. They had brought baby Squish with them and I got to say hi to her. My uncle is also into some pretty nerdy things, like Marvel and Lord of the Rings, so he had just decided to take a peek at what was going on in the nerd shop. Hell yeah, I mean, nerdery is pretty mainstream these days, so I'm not super surprised that you would see some other people that you know there. Daddy Bear says, Were you gonna dress up today, Lizzie? Oh my god! <laughs> OP. Yeah, I just brought my stuff in a bag because I was a little worried that I had mixed the days up. Just wanted to be sure, you know? Mama Bear, who are you dressing up as? OP, Siri from The Witcher, I say as I excitedly show them the contents of my bag. Mama Bear, you made all of this? Oh, that is amazing. OP, technically I bought most of it, <laughs> but I did alter the shirt on the sewing machine. With Nanny's help. <laughs> God, I'm 
<laughs> such a dick. Daddy bear. That's great. Oh, I'm sorry, but we need to go now. But before we do, can I ask you a favor? Whoa. OP. <laughs> sure, uncle. What's up? Daddy bear. Mama bear and I just wanted to get a little more shopping done. And since you're here for about an hour or so, would you mind looking after Squish? Whoa! OP, very excited to spend a bit of quality time with my baby cousin. Absolutely. Just give me a call and I'll meet you guys wherever you need me. Quick speed run through the next half hour. Bless. <laughs> I got into my cosplay and went to the nerd shop. I met a couple of other cosplayers. There was a nice lady there cosplaying as Sylvie from the Loki series. We had a good old chat about Marvel and the new movies and exchanged our Instas. I bought a new Funko Pop. Uh-oh. You guys know how I feel about Funko Pops. <laughs> if you don't, uh, it ain't positive, I'll say that. It was Arya Stark. As soon as I turned away from the counter, I noticed it. Or more specifically, I noticed him. Oh, thank God. Give me that beard cringe. <laughs> That's what I showed up for. He was a large man, and I mean that in almost every sense of the word. He easily towered over me in height, and he was a pretty chubby bloke as well. I don't want to fat shame anyone, as I too have struggled with my weight. I'm not fat, but I have a bit of tummy pudge, and I had a double chin that I'm working on getting rid of. I'm trying to say this with all the love in the world, OP, but how? In God's name, does every talking point end up turning back onto yourself? You know, I'm growing just the slightest bit frustrated at this point. Uh, again, maybe it's just the mood I'm in today, but Jesus. Uh, but this guy, oh my God. <laughs> this guy was fat. And that is all I will say for now. He was wearing a t-shirt of some anime that was covered in stains and even had a few holes in it. He didn't have a fedora, but he was carrying a large plastic sword that I recognized as something from Halo. Energy sword? Bruh. That's cool. <laughs> you couldn't even call whatever was growing on his neck a beard. It honestly kind of just looked like pubes. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Witcher Beard. And luckily, you're dressed up as Siri. All right, bring the cringe. Come on. <laughs> I'm fucking ready. If Witcherbeard had just been minding his own business, I wouldn't have paid him any mind. But oh no, dear reader, this guy was full on staring at me. Our eyes met and I looked away quickly. OP, thinking to herself, what the hell? Oh, well, we probably just happened to look in each other's direction in that moment. <laughs> Yeah, this will happen. <laughs> I snuck another glance to see if he was still looking, and of course, he was, fully wide-eyed and not moving. A bit weirded out at this point, I turned away to try and avoid this guy when suddenly I felt two fingers poke into my sides. I turned to see Lance, my boyfriend. Whew, I was both shocked, happy, and relieved that he was there. I jokingly slapped him for scaring me like that, and then I hugged him. We chatted for a little bit until I noticed a strange look come across Lance's face. OP, what's wrong? Lance, there's some guy staring at you. <laughs> I tensed up. Oh no. OP, yeah, I noticed it before. It's creepy, huh? Lance, do you want me to go and knock him out? He asked in a joking way. Lance is a pretty scrawny guy, and I've never seen him get into a physical fight. If he did, I'd probably end up having to save his ass. Because you know OP, she's not like other girls. <laughs> uh, OP, no, but thank you for the offer. In my best Siri voice, I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself. We shared a laugh, and then my phone rang. It was my uncle. He asked me to pick up Squish from the food court, and Lance and I made our way out of the shop. I took one last glance at Witcherbeard, and lo and behold, he was still staring, only this time he looked mad. You know that meme of Henry Cavill in the Justice League? Just look up Mad Cavill slash Angry Superman, and I can assure you that whatever you find, that is what he looked like. My smile faded, and Lance and I just left. 
Well, surely that was the end of this encounter, <laughs> right? The rest of this post is just OP talking about her interests. Truly, we have been blessed this day. <laughs> so we took Squish and left Mama and Daddy Bear to their shopping. While we were there, Lance and I decided to grab some lunch. We decided on Marcus. That's what we call McDonald's down here. And while we were waiting for our food, I swear to God, there he was again. Witcher beard. Bro, you knew when Neckbeard was going to be at the McDonald's. Come on now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't even eat anything else besides Hot Pockets. <laughs> he was in line at the Marcus and still staring at me and Lance and now Squish. Squish was sleeping in her pram next to Lance, who was on his phone, not even noticing what was happening in front of him. I tried my best to avoid eye contact with this guy and began thinking, could I leave Squish with Lance and just go hide in the bathroom? No, this guy might try and pick a fight with my boyfriend, and then Squish would be left all alone. Maybe I could give the receipt to Lance, and he could listen for our orders, and I'd go find a table with Squish. The latter seemed far more rational, so... I gave Lance the receipts, and Little Squish and I found a nice spot far, far away from any vacant seats. Okay, but you know the neckbeard's just gonna come up and stand next to your table, right? <laughs> Stick with your boyfriend. It's really the only option that you have at that point. Because the only thing that a neckbeard fears is another male. <laughs> An alpha male. <laughs> So Squish and I just kind of chilled in our little spot. I scrolled through my phone to find some quality memes, and little Squish continued sleeping. Suddenly, a punk of a kid ran past Squish's pram, screaming like a loon and waking her up. Squish began to cry, so like the good big cousin that I am, I pulled her up and tried to nurse her back to sleep. <laughs> nurse her back to sleep? You pull out your titty in a McDonald's? <laughs> I know that she didn't, but it's just funnier to, to think of it that way, isn't it? And that is when all of a sudden I hear a deep, croaky voice beside me. Witcher Beard. Why, hello there. Oh, no. <laughs> Do y'all remember that one trailer from Land of the Lost with Will Ferrell? Did anybody watch that movie? <laughs> all I remember was the trailer. And he says... He's right behind me, isn't he? Well, that was me in that moment. I turned slowly to find none other than Witcherbeard in all his disgusting, greasy glory. Now that he was up close, I could get a better look and unfortunately smell of him. His medium black hair that had obviously been dyed looked like if a kid imitated something that they saw in a movie where a character uses car oil to slick back their hair. Which, looking back now, that is probably exactly what he did. The stains on his shirt were now more detailed, let's just say. As in, you could clearly tell what was coffee and what was food and what was, uh, other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those conspicuous white stains on the hem of every Neckbeard's t-shirt. <laughs> you know what it is. I ain't gotta say it. Y'all, I literally feel the need to throw out a whole shirt when just one seam comes undone. And if it has a stain, then I'm basically never wearing it in public again. How Neckbeard's up and dressed like this every day just baffles me. I mean, they don't give a shit. <laughs> it's no mystery. And the smell. Oh, God, the smell. He smelled of old milk and cheese that had just been left in the sun for a week. Have y'all ever let the dishes just pile up in the sink because you were too lazy to clean them for about a week or so? Well, that is what this guy smelt like. I was a bachelor for many years. I think a week or so is, <laughs> is going light on it. I've had dishes in the sink for a month. I'm telling you, I was on the cusp of neckbeardery. Wifey saved me. No, most of this conversation is paraphrased because I got goldfish brains. You got donkey brains? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, OP has been cleared of all donkey brains. OP trying to hold back a gag. Uh, can I help you? 
winter beard. Why is such a fine young lady like you concerning yourself with a, such a peasant? Yes, he actually said this. Like him, he said, pointing towards Lance. OP, because uh, he's my boyfriend. He then looks down at Squish, who is currently drooling on my chest. That would have been a cute scene anywhere else, but here, just no, Witcher Beard. And such a beautiful child you have. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck, that's cringe. You're a lucky girl. Can I ask how old you are? I'm thinking that this guy is probably under the impression that Squish is my baby. And he's asking my age, because I ain't gonna lie. I'm 17, but I look at least 15 or 16. OP, I'm 17. And I think you're confused. This, he cuts me off. What's your beard? Oh, not quite ripe yet. Oh, God! <laughs> Jesus. That is some heavy cringe. I'm glad I powered through the first part of this story. It might have all been worth it. <laughs> That's what I need. I am dying from cringe now. I just want my chips and iced coffee and for this prick to fucking leave. I want to say something, but I am still rendered speechless <laughs> from that last statement. I think we all would be. I hold Squish a bit closer to me now. Witcher beard. It's such a shame, though. I saw you at the nerd shop, and you looked so unhappy when your boyfriend attacked you. I even saw you slap him. It looked like you were trying to get someone's attention. I knew you needed help. <laughs> uh, bro, I insist. OP is not the one who needs help. <laughs> OP, he didn't attack me. He was just playing. I don't need any help. And then you should have amended that statement. I don't need any help. You do. Get away from me. <laughs> Witcher Beard says, It's okay. You're in a safe place with me. I could save you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Neckbeards actually think. I can save you by dragging you into a far worse situation. Does he beat you? I bet that's how this happened. He gestured towards Squish. H has he forced himself on you? Oh, boy. If Squish was not in my arms, I would have gone full WWE on this idiot's ass. Not only did he just accuse my loving boyfriend of raping and impregnating me, but it reminded me of how Squish came to be. My aunt and uncle had been trying to have her for so long, which then resulted in a few failed attempts... When Squish finally came to be, they were ecstatic, and hearing this guy unknowingly blow off all of their pain and hard work made me fucking furious. Oh, Squish is a rainbow baby. That's a term that I learned from the comments in the <laughs> Legbeard of My Nightmares video. Thank you, commenters, for correcting me on that. Rainbow baby. Write that one down. OP says, what? No. How dare you even think that for a single second? Witcher Beard. Well, it's pretty obvious, wouldn't you say? What teenage girl would have a child willingly when she has so much more to live for? <laughs> OP. Well, even if that is the case, what makes you think it's appropriate to comment on it? Or better yet, what gave you any idea that I needed your chivalry? Witcher Beard. I saw the way you looked at me when you left the shop. You were... Lance interrupts. What's going on here? Lance had finally arrived with our food, and he looked confused as all hell. I glared at Witcherbeard, who looked as though he still didn't believe me that Lance was in fact not abusive. OP, nothing. Put the food in the pram, Lance. Let's go. Witcherbeard... Wait, you don't have to suffer in silence. <laughs> I can help. <laughs> in that moment, Witcherbeard grabbed my shoulder with his cold, sweaty hand. 
I nudged his hand away, careful as not to hurt Squish. I wanted to scream at this mother fricker, <laughs> but I didn't want to wake her or cause too much of a scene in the middle of a goddamn food court, so I just growled through gritted teeth. OP, don't you ever lay a hand on me again, Lance. Stay away from my girlfriend and the baby, you fucking creep. Witcherbeard turned his attention to Lance and gave him a look that he probably thought was some terrifying anime death glare, but he just looked like Mad Cavill all over again. Witcherbeard, hey, don't raise your voice at me, asshole. I saw Lance get a look in his eyes. Pure death. I thought fast, put Squish in the pram, and grabbed Lance's arm. OP, Come on, Lance, let's go. Don't pay attention to him. Oh, come on, Lance. Don't let this dude punk you like that. You ain't gotta punch him, but you at least gotta say something. <laughs> Eat shit, that'll work. We went for a walk around the shops to try and calm ourselves down. I contemplated getting changed and washing off my makeup, but I thought, nah, I'm not gonna let some neckbeard punk stop me from showing off my cosplay. And also, I'm too lazy to change. <laughs> So we continued looking around. After about an hour or so, we went to a different nerd shop in the shopping center, and Lance was getting something from his car. I was looking for a copy of Uncharted 4 since Lance had recently gotten me into the game. I even have plans to cosplay a female Nathan Drake. I found the game, went up to the counter with Squitch and her pram. I didn't want to let her out of my sight after what had just happened. I chatted a little with the clerk, and he complimented my cosplay and asked about Squish. I told him that she was my cousin, and I made a joke about her being my child. Uh, okay. I was just about to pay when all of a sudden I smelled something. My Witcher senses were kicking in again. Do you remember that episode of The Amazing World of Gumball where Miss Simeon's breath was so bad that it killed everything in its path and could even be smelled through the phones? Amazing World of Gumball. No, I remember a Spongebob episode. <laughs> Again, I'm feeling pretty old. I ain't never watched Gumball. I turned and guess who I saw? Witcherbeard? Witcherbeard. <laughs> Witcherbeard said, I'm sorry if I offended you earlier. I didn't mean to insult you or your beautiful little girl. <laughs> Stop calling my child beautiful, you freak. <laughs> it's making me really uncomfortable. I wasn't having any of this, so I tried to be the bigger person and just walk away, not even acknowledging his existence, but he blocked my path. OP, dude, what the hell? Move, Witcherbeard. I know you have a boyfriend, but please consider this. <laughs> I gave him a look that to me meant, get the frick out of my way before I boot your ass across this shopping center like Darren Lockyer. But he must have thought that it meant, go ahead, but make it snappy. <laughs> Witcherbeard said, hey, come home with me. I'll give you everything you want. I'll treat you like a queen. You and your daughter. And you don't have to put up with... <laughs> What the actual freaking frack? I was pissed now. I just wanted to go home, make a cuppa, light some incense, and play my game. I was so sick of this guy not leaving me alone, and I was about to give him a piece of my mind. I screamed at the top of my lungs, not caring that I was now making a scene. OP, get out of my way, you fucking wanker! You've done nothing but stare at me all day, Follow me around all the shops like a creep and harass me. Then you have the balls to accuse my boyfriend of some actually heinous shit. Who do you think you are? Either I was yelling so loud or the staff at the shop called security because a guard entered the store. Guard, miss, I have to ask you to calm down. What happened here? I was shaking with rage but managed to calm down. My dumbass ended up waking Squish, so I picked her up and walked to the back of the shop, giving Witcherbeard the chance to give his twisted side of the story. I was so angry, but I was also scared, and when I'm scared, I tend to think very irrationally, as most humans do. 
Every terrible thought was going through my mind in that moment. This guy is gonna hurt me. Like in some of those crazy neckbeard stories. Or worse, he'll hurt Squish. What if the guards let him go? And he follows me out of the shopping center and potentially follows me home? Then what? While I will say it is good to be on alert, don't problem the problem, you know? See what happens and then deal with it as it comes. There's no need to get freaked out over nothing because I'll tell you what, this guy is absolutely going down for being a, a weird stalker. <laughs> After about another five minutes, a second guard shows up to keep an eye on Witcherbeard, while the first one asks for my side of things. I told him everything, from when he was eyeing me in the nerd shop, accusing Lance of raping me and following me around, to what had just happened. In the story, I mentioned that Squish was my baby cousin, and Guard was kind of confused. Guard, Oh, he told us that the baby was your child. From the way he described you, I was under the impression that you two already knew each other. OP, What? No, I don't even know his fucking name. Guard, In that case, we can escort him out of the shopping center. However, as you weren't physically harmed, I don't think you'll be able to press charges. About stalking, harassment, something like that. You could slap him with something. Get me a real cop. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I'm not familiar with the laws in my town, and I never checked up on him because I didn't want to make this into a bigger deal than it already was. Also, I knew if Mama and Daddy Bear ever found out about this, they would freak out, and rightfully so. I was scared that they'd never let me take Squish out ever again. I wasn't going to let a neckbeard take away any precious time with my baby cousin. OP, that's okay, just please take him away from me and my cousin. Both guards took Witcherbeard out, all the while he was screaming at me. Witcherbeard, YOU FUCKING SWAT! <laughs> Classic. Uh, over and over, I didn't care. I was just happy that he was finally gone. Lance finally returned from the car, and I didn't tell him what had happened, because then I knew that he would be out for blood. I also made him take a vow of silence about what he knew had happened, because he knew how much Squish meant to me and her parents, and he agreed. We met back up with Mama and Daddy Bear, <laughs> acted like everything was fucking fine. <laughs> they said goodbye to Squish, and got Lance to drive me home. I didn't let this experience stop me from cosplaying, and I'm even working on a few more. Can't wait for COVID to end so that I can go to more conventions. Sorry if this was a bit long, and I rambled a little in certain spots. Hope that you enjoyed this story, because I sure as hell did not enjoy living it. Yeah, isn't that every young girl's dream to be swept away to a fucking neckbeard nest? <laughs> I'll provide everything for you. I hope you like tendies and hot pockets. <laughs> God damn. I did come out of the gate giving OP both barrels, but once we got to the beard and the actual meat of the events, yeah, you might be able to tell I stopped fucking razzing her so hard. Then I'm able to turn my hatred fully onto the neck beard. But yeah, going into these stories, I'm always like, I need somebody to pick on. <laughs> Unfortunately, it had to be OP for the first half, and I do hope that you can forgive me for it. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not a malicious person, okay? I just really enjoy talking shit. <laughs> God damn. I think it is absolutely wild that you spoke no word of this to anybody. You're just like, okay, here's your child back. Everything was great. <laughs> bye bye. Holy shit, man. Isn't it better to come clean about something like that? Because if they ever do find out, they are going to be so mortified. I'm sure they understand that weirdos are out there, but the fact that you're trying to keep this encounter with a weirdo secret from them, that would be the reason that I would pull the plug and be like, okay, we don't trust you with the baby anymore. You know what I mean? But I do also understand being young. You know, you can't trust the parents. They just don't understand. That brings me back to the Will Smith rap that happened yesterday. <laughs> God, we've been having a good time these past couple of days. I hope OP was able to have fun with this one as well. There was a lot of talking in circles at the beginning, but once we got into it, I was glad to be there. So thank you very much for posting. I'm going to create my own opportunities to be weird. <laughs>
I don't know how many years on this earth I got left. I'm going to get real weird with it. My friend, the Neckbeard, his fake crazy pills, weaponized dandruff, and the monster that made him this way. Oh, God. Was it his mother? <laughs> <laughs> we always see a lot of like parents in the formation of beard stories and I hope that we get that in this episode too. If we can figure out the origin, then maybe we can stop them. <laughs> Anyways, there are two creatures in this double creature feature, Flake and Crusher. You'll see why I picked those nicknames soon enough because one has flaky dandruff and the other crushed the dude's soul so he doesn't shower so he has... Flaky dandruff. Never mind. I'm going to let OP tell it. <laughs> I would just be over here in the back. <laughs> a bit of background to start. For the first half of my adolescence, I was what could easily be considered a loser. A shy, lanky kid with a perpetually dorky haircut who was far too into things like Dungeons and & Dragons and Star Wars. A situation only made worse by a sudden divorce and a quick move to a new school district. That does make it rough, man. It sounds like you're uh, a little older. Right now, nerd chic is totally a thing, but <laughs> back in the days, yes. If you played Dungeons and Dragons or enjoyed Star Wars, you were mocked somewhat mercilessly. I had only two other friends throughout elementary school, other dorks who knew to stick together. <laughs> Once we got to junior high, we met Flake. An instant friendship started when we saw him spelling swear words with his food at lunch. <laughs> Sounds like junior high school. He was a sweet, goofy theater kid with even sweeter parents. I considered them a second mom and dad. Hmm. Well, there's a hole in my theory. <laughs> the four of us were thick as thieves. And honestly, none of us were that weird at that time. Just unlucky enough to be the four poor kids at a school with weird districting lines that meant the school was mostly composed of wealthy families. The summer after 8th grade is when things started to change. I was blessed and had a hardcore glow up, which paired with the high school being in a different school district meant that I had a fresh start at a social life. Even though I suddenly found myself moderately popular once high school started, I'd been through too much with my childhood friends to just abandon them, even if I got the occasional side-eye for hanging out with those weird kids, because they truly were my brothers. That being said, Flake sure made that stance beyond difficult with the new persona he adopted once we hit our teenage years. It seems like everybody's adopting a new persona. Why do you get to change personas but Flake doesn't? Leave that beard alone! Maybe. <laughs> I might take that right back. I don't know why, but Flake started acting like a complete goon, but I blame cringe, early 2000s Newgrounds animations like Foamy the Squirrel and Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> oh, happy Tree Friends. God damn, that's a throwback. He started wearing all black every day with tacky spiked armbands or sweatbands adorned with pentagrams and anarchy symbols on his wrists. And my God, they were so dirty that they changed colors and made the skin under them damp and ten shades more pale. All his shirts were either slipknot tees or those button-up shirts with the skulls and flames. Basically, just the worst picks out of a Hot Topic catalog. I could honestly deal with his awful fashion choices. Most of us had cringe fashion back in the MySpace days, but it was his over-the-top, fake, edgy personality. That really drove me up the wall. OP sitting there describing new grounds and hot topic dress, and I'm just like, is this story about me right now? <laughs> this was totally me fresh into high school before I really, like, found myself, which I think that's what Flake is trying to do. Just find himself. He deserves a fresh start, OP. Give me a break. Although, <laughs> I might take it back when we find out just how edgy he is. He would spend class with these awful, fake, psychotic scowls on his face, interrupting teachers by making some completely unrelated comment about how much he likes fire, or, or knives, or, or swords. <laughs> okay, I take it back. <laughs> Sometimes following all that up with some stupid, crazy laugh 
that just sounded like a witch's cackle. <laughs> One time, a teacher that had a very low tolerance for class clowns rolled their eyes at him and said very sarcastically, Okay, Flake, calm down. I'm starting to get totally scared. To which Flake replied, You should be. <laughs> with a self-satisfied smirk. <laughs> he doesn't know what sarcasm is. Our second year, some poor new teacher who didn't know better sent him to the guidance counselor out of pure concern, which Flake wore as a badge of honor, saying that he freaked out a teacher so bad <laughs> they sent me to the crazy doctor. <laughs> uh, this poor fucking kid. The absolute worst was before class when everyone was talking and joking with each other. And out of nowhere, Flake would yell, Be quiet! I can't hear the voices in my head! As a sad bid for attention. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> if this guy was any more transparent, nobody could see him. <laughs> like all neckbeards, his hygiene was questionable. And when he wasn't clawing for attention... He would spend class vigorously scratching thick flakes of dandruff onto a folder. Ugh. And then blowing it out into the open air once he had amassed a sizable pile. Oh, no. That is so foul. People are going to breathe that in, you know. Ugh. At assemblies, he would sit behind people he didn't like on the bleachers and lean over to sneakily shower them in his blizzard of dandruff. Oh. God, dude, I hate this. Uh, I don't know why it gets to me so much. I mean, yes, I do. It, it's disgusting. He also had a redhead obsession, and any girl with even remotely reddish hair would be in his crosshairs. A few of them were too nice to tell him off, and he would stay absolutely glued to them, trying to play the long game of winning their attraction as a friend. He would physically hang off of them, in long, uncomfortable hugs, saying, Best friend! In a voice not unlike Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Best friend! <laughs> Something like that. This made all of their boyfriends uncomfortable, and over the years, I had to use my clout to convince more than one of them to not kick his ass, because he was harmless and posed less than zero threat. OP out here. Flexing his high school clout. <laughs> Give this man a round of applause. He saved a beard from getting his ass kicked. Honestly, this kid should have his ass kicked. Not necessarily for the weird hugs that lasted too long from girls who were too polite to say no, but mostly because of the, the dandruff showers. I really can't get over that. It's going to haunt my nightmares. <laughs> By the end of year two... Sophomore year had rolled around, and I was hanging out with people from neighboring schools as well, and decided that I'd try introducing some of them to Flake. Bro. <laughs> His obnoxious persona was non-existent outside of school when there wasn't a crowd, and I thought that maybe he could get some friends who didn't know him as an edgy tryhard with weaponized dandruff. Ah, oh boy, was I wrong. As soon as they showed up, it was lights, camera, crazy. <laughs> I think he's only good in a one-on-one -on -one setting with people that he's not, like, trying to impress or something like that. I tried keeping conversation non-controversial so he didn't have any opportunity to be weird. <laughs> but even talking about music, he steered the conversation towards Slipknot and how all oh, the music about people being shit and being alone and full of anger spoke to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to create my own opportunities to be weird. <laughs> the cherry on top was when he pulled out a bottle of prescription pills, showing off the black and yellow capsules before saying, Hold up, I, I gotta take my crazy pills. <laughs> They make sure that I don't lose it and do something fucked up. Um, those were acne pills. <laughs> I knew because I was prescribed the exact same kind. 
to this day, I still wonder if maybe I should have just let him have his moment, but I was so tired of his performance. I went, Flake, come on, dude. Those are pills for acne. <laughs> I take the exact same ones. His cocky smirk instantly vanished, and he stuttered out some excuse about, ah, we must have gotten the bottles mixed up. I can't remember the rest of the hangout. I was too mortified, but I know that he never saw those people again. It feels to me kind of like OP's just shitting on this beardo in front of other people to try and work on that good old high school clout, doesn't it? I don't know, man. I got some thoughts on this. We'll, we'll get to it later. <laughs> the summer between years two and three, all my questions about what had happened to Flake were suddenly answered when Flake's friend, who was normally only in town for the summer that I had also never met, moved here full time. This dude, Crusher, was the neck beard. <laughs> Top tier cloud of stench, multiple chins, fedora, and the most edgy attitude paired with an undeserved I'm better than everyone else level of, comp level of confidence with a little bit of compulsive liar garnish. It was clear that for whatever reason, Flake idolized this fucking loser. Maybe it was because he was naive and believed Crush whenever he lied about knowing the members of any given metal band or having three ways every weekend. <laughs> Think Dermot from Venture Bros, only morbidly obese. He was the type who would never admit that he was full of shit. One time we played Smash Bros Melee after he claimed to be a national champion, and the string of matches went like this. Okay, well, you only won because I went easy on you, and I didn't play my character. Next match, he loses as his main. <laughs> Why, well, you only won because you played a cheap character. Marth, I guess? Play another match and let him literally pick my character. He picks Peach, and I still win. Should have picked Peach, you bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't have time to sit around playing Smash nonstop. It's no fun playing with Tryhard. <laughs> uh, ironic. <laughs> Whenever I would ask him to prove that he had all these music industry contacts or girlfriends, he'd say that I was too untrustworthy to keep it on the down low. And whenever I'd call him on his bullshit attitude, he'd just say I couldn't take a joke and was killing the vibe. <coughs> oh, I shouldn't pick Smeagol voice. That's fucking me up. <laughs> he called women females or Bitches! Depending on how he felt that day. And the only joy I ever got out of hanging out with him were the many times that he tried talking tough to the wrong person and turned into a whimpering puddle of spineless goo when they got into his face. The best being when he waddled off full on crying after someone cold cocked him in the jaw for commenting on their girlfriend's breasts. Do you think he learned a lesson? because I highly doubt that he learned any sort of lesson. <laughs> the only reason I never backhanded the dude myself, ooh, tough guy OP, <laughs> was that Flake always asked me to just be cool and put up with him as a favor. And despite how annoying and weird Flake was, he was still my friend, so I honored that request. I couldn't find a way to organically work it into the story, but the nickname Crusher came from his habit of causing whatever he sat on to break because of his girth. <laughs> Quite literal, I suppose. Multiple friends lost lawn chairs to his fat ass, and one super unfortunate friend was never able to open the trunk of his car again after Crusher sat on it during a hangout when we Flick dragged him along. Dude, that's... <laughs> what? <laughs> uh... That's too ridiculous, dude. If you're gonna be this big, then at least be aware that you're this big. And maybe don't sit on people's cars. <laughs> Thankfully, by the end of the first semester, the school found out that Crusher's mom had lied about his address, and he was shipped off to another school district to terrorize more people, and I never saw him again. So there you have it. How I met the Omega Neckbeard. 
and how he turned my childhood friend into a near insufferable edgelord. If Flake was Darth Vader, then Crusher was indeed Emperor Palpatine. I lost touch with Flake after high school, but according to his social media, it looks like he finally got rid of Crusher, cleaned up his life, and even has a wife and kids now. If you guys like this one, I got plenty more. My school had some real beardy winners. Or beardy wieners, as OP from the Kaiju Beard posts had theorized yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so the relationship between Flake and Crusher, like, okay, cool, whatever, I totally buy it. But what I'm more interested in is the relationship between Flake and OP. Did OP actually have a glow up and become a popular kid and not shuffle uh, Flake off because he's just such a good guy <laughs> that he couldn't leave behind his friends? Or is it possible that it's similar to a situation I saw on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Dennis is walking around calling himself a golden god and all the other people at high school were like, yeah, you were a loser, bro. You're hanging out with a bunch of losers. <laughs> Nobody even liked you. There's only about two or three points in the story where the OP humble brags, but <laughs> even one humble brag is enough for me to turn the whole thing around and be like, yeah, I'm not enjoying this anymore and you're going to suffer right along with me. <laughs> So yeah, Flake seems to be an asshole. Crusher seems to be an even bigger asshole. And OP, I'm sort of undecided about. I do lean towards asshole because the situation with the pills for acne or whatever and you calling him out in front of all these other people does show what you really like as a person and not necessarily the face that you're trying to present to Reddit. Although I might be theorizing too much about it, going a little hard on the OP. Overall, I think it was a pretty enjoyable story. I do hope now that Flake is not as beardy as he was that you might reach out to him at some point and create some new memories that are uh, fresh, better. Maybe you could share those with us as well. If you put that ice cream in your mouth, you're going to be in big trouble, young man. <laughs> Neck beard and the ice cream social or alternate title, I scream. <laughs> Hey everyone! YouTube came through for me today and introduced me to RedX! Hey! Thanks YouTube algorithm! Doing his thing! I hope you left a comment to help me out <laughs> pushing these videos out there. And his amazing dramatic readings of neckbeard tales. Indeed. <laughs> I've had fun listening to everyone's tales of horror, woe, and neckbeard baiting. That's the good stuff. Oh, bless us, St. Adelaide, <laughs> our lady of beard slaying. So I figured that I would throw my own tail, or two of my own tails, into the ring. Anyways, let's begin the story. Setting a churchyard in the south in the middle of summer. OP, 26 female, a former weeb with a fully functioning personality and social skills with a regrettable choice of dress for today's events. It was an event. I was allowed to dress up, and I wanted to look pretty. No one can hold that against me. you damn right, OP. Nobody ever tell me it's because of what she was wearing. No, it's because you're a degenerate. <laughs> Unfortunately, this dress also made OP the target of the neckbeard in this tale. And then we got our neckbeard. We'll call him ice cream beard. <laughs> that sounds fun. The bulbous, nauseating, and revolting 35-something man-child who thought that I would be the lady of his neckbeard dreams. <laughs> uh, oh boy. It all began in the summer of a year, not 2020, that I would really like to forget. <laughs> I'm a bright-eyed grad student taking some time off for the summer because school is hard and I am tired. You deserve some time off, you know, take care of yourself. I was looking for something to do during the summer, outside of just watching YouTube videos until the wee morning hours and playing Civ 5. Nice! <laughs> that sounds like the ideal summer to me. <laughs> My grandma informed me of a charity event that was being held in her neighborhood. It was for the local church and their homeless shelter. I was on board for the cause and I overall liked the idea. And once she told me that it would be an ice cream social style charity fundraiser, I really liked the idea. Hell yeah, bro. Charity's cool and stuff, but I really like ice cream. <laughs> if you're not familiar with an ice cream social, then I'm sorry, because they're a lot of fun. 
I don't go to anything with social in the title. I'm, I'm sorry. Except social media sometimes. <laughs> Basically, people just all eat ice cream at a party. Or in this case, ice cream for money and for a good cause. I got in contact with the team running the fundraiser and got assigned the job of Sprinkle Station. Hell yes, yeah, Sprinkles. The stations went something like this. Station 1, information on the event, cool facts, and other nice things that the church does to help the community. Station 2, ice cream galore. Every flavor that humanity has ever created. It was a beautiful sight. Yo, hook me up with some pistachio, OP. That's what I'm about. Either that or, or vanilla, because I suck. <laughs> Station 3, napkins, spoons, forks. I, I don't know, but you do you. No shame. The hell you need a fork for? I guess like banana split or something. And also wet wipes because it's summer and we've got ice cream. Things are going to get messy. <laughs> station four, my station, sprinkles and other assorted goodies to top your ice cream. Ooh, give me them Oreos. <laughs> there were three copies of stations placed around the churchyard because no one wants to deal with like a mad rush of hungry people all coming to your place at once and it would help to break up the flow. Now, since it was a church-based event with an old-fashioned twist, the volunteers were encouraged to dress as nicely as they could while also minding the weather. Again, it is summer in the South. We are hot, and heat stroke is honestly a killer. God, this one's topical too. We're dealing with the typhoon here in the Philippines, so it's like raining and also hot as hell. <laughs> and I hate it. Guys did not have to dress in a suit, Girls didn't have to wear a dress, and everyone just had to remain as cool as they could while they sling the icy treats wanted by all. Especially me. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> I gotta eat before I edit this. We would have tents to cover us from the sun, and fans and more umbrellas than a tacky island-based bar, but it never hurts to remind people to remain cool. I decided to try and dress nicely because it is a church, and I don't really get that many opportunities to dress up. It was going to be a pretty day, and I wanted to break out of my normal jeans and t-shirt combo. You know, let a gal dress up. That's right, OP, invest in yourself, you know? <laughs> I had a dress in mind, a pretty white sundress with blue flowers on it. The dress of my dreams. A uh, sundress, it's always a good pick. <laughs> be still, my beating heart. <laughs> To add to it, I decided to wear my favorite gardening hat, a sun hat with a pretty black ribbon on it. It was a gift from my mom when we first started my garden, and I love it very much. Oh, and OP has a garden? You know she's a good egg, that's how you know. <laughs> to top off my outfit, sensible shoes and a pair of lace gloves that I will admit were an impulse purchase from Amazon. I've never worn lace gloves, and I probably never will again <laughs> after this encounter. Those poor gloves took the brunt of the abuse. May they rest in peace. Looking cute and also protected from the sun, I was ready to serve sprinkles and everything else that these guests could want. The day of the fundraiser came, and as expected, it was hot as hell. We came prepared with sunscreen, our fans, tents, umbrellas. People scattered to the shade like cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> when all the spaces were occupied, they contented themselves with the shade under the magnolia trees. Oh, that sounds so nice. As the event went on, everything went pretty smoothly overall. We only ran out of two flavors pretty late into the fundraiser, and everyone was well-behaved and overall cool. I was doing alright, and making pleasant conversation with people who wanted their sprinkles, or jimmies. <laughs> as one gentleman insisted I needed to call them. Whatever, man. I got no skin in the Sprinkles v. Jimmy debate. <laughs> you do you. That's right, and don't ever tell me how to fucking do me, all right? <laughs> I call them what I want. I can call them fairy farts if I want. You want them to get called Jimmy's, then go back 50 years and head down to the soda jerk for a malt. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> I, I, that makes me so irrationally angry for some reason. <laughs> Sometime around two, maybe three, it was then that I saw, or rather smelled him. Yes, that's right, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Oh my god, I love that. 
It was our neck beard. Ice cream beard. Granted that it was a hot day, and people did sweat. I was not prepared, though, for the assault on my senses. Imagine, if you will, oh no, here it comes. <laughs> a toilet broke down in the middle of summer. <laughs> then you throw that toilet in a hoarder's house and just let it stew for 50 years. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that's good. I think they call it Jankum. <laughs> the fermentation of what had to be waste or something rotting wafted in my direction. Damn you, wind. <laughs> I scanned the open field where we worked, and it was then that I saw him, the neckbeard. He, unlike everyone else who wore cool or weather-friendly clothes, was dressed in sweatpants. <laughs> Make sure you dress up. Oh, these are my best sweatpants. <laughs> he also had boots. Not uncommon for the area, but with sweatpants, bruh. <laughs> and he also had a strange black and white hoodie. I wasn't able to see it because he stood at a distance. But the second he and I locked eyes, he made a hasty, hefty beeline run towards me. <laughs> <laughs> Effectively cutting off anyone from the much-desired sprinkles, or jimmies, or fairy farts, whatever you want to call them. And when my line and everyone else got a whiff of that neckbeard smell, they instantly decided that eh, sprinkles were really overrated. <laughs> and went on to greener pastures. Take me with you, you bastards. <laughs> Don't leave me here alone. I'll give you sprinkles. <laughs> Hope he's killing me, man. <laughs> Anyways, my desperate looks at all the passers-by went unanswered, and I was left alone with ice cream beard. Now that he was up close to me, I could finally see what strange hoodie he was wearing, and I held back a tiny gasp. Y'all, he was literally wearing an Ahegao hoodie. To a church ice cream social. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, it's too good. <laughs> Had I been wearing pearls, I would have clutched them. <laughs> that hoodie at this place with children around? Like, fair, the kids probably, hopefully, don't know. But you never know with some of the parents or outside influences that these kids are getting. Hell yeah, dude, these kids get on the internet, watch a little bit of Red X. They know what I got is the next day. Google's right there. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry in advance, children. <laughs> I was puzzled. I mean, I know what it's like to have a clothing item that makes you feel good, but I do not understand a fucking I got hoodie. <laughs> uh, regrettably, I wasn't able to hide my recognition of that damned hoodie, because I was not expecting it. If you're on the internet long enough, you'll run into this horror before long. <laughs> Look, here it is. Here's the sweater. If you didn't know, you know now. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Ripping my eyes away from the foul article of clothing stretched over a bloated stomach, I focused on the face of the beard who stood in front of my station. He was severely overweight with a pubic-like beard over his triple chin. His face was so oily that I wondered when the drilling operation would start. <laughs> America gonna invade your face, bruh. <laughs> Sweat came from every clogged up pore and ran down his red face like Niagara Falls. <laughs> his eyes were bright as he scanned my entire body, from my face to my chest. Thank God the table was at waist height. The beard smiled and tipped his non-existent hat towards me. <laughs> the lady, he said in his best, I'm a gentleman, voice. Sprinkles, sir, <laughs> I replied, diving deep into my retail days to resurrect my best damn customer service voice. It was cold, inhuman, and did a damn fine job in repulsing many who wanted to strike up a conversation. Tragically, the neckbeard survived it unharmed. <laughs> he chuckled at me. I never knew a chuckle could sound so damn greasy, but 
It did. <laughs> What's a girl like you doing in a place like this? I'm fucking working. What's it look like I'm doing? Was the venomous phrase that was poised on my tongue. But I was bound by social standards not to be rude. So instead, I answered back, helping to raise money for charity. If you'd like, you can go to Station 1 and pick up some great literature on our event today. No, seriously, go to Station 1. Never come back. Please go away. <laughs> he, of course, did not go to Station 1. The beard parked himself on the folding chair. How that chair survived, I don't know. It did make me want to go out and buy that type of chair, though. <laughs> It survived an utmost quality test. It was then that Ice Cream Beard started to pelt me with questions and other statements. Do you like anime? Did you read manga? That's a pretty dress. You should wear it more often. You look dainty like this elf princess. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> elf princess? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It always gets me. Yeah, insert a reference to some fucking anime I never heard of before. And after hearing him describe her, big chest, big hips, strictly head tie, I knew that I didn't ever want to. <laughs> My responses to those things were as follows Meh, eh, hmm, nah. <laughs> I thought those were good responses to give. It was a clear indication that I was not interested and did not want to talk to him. Unfortunately, what I said translated into Neckbeardian as Anime, that glorious and wondrous invention that has brought ink and paper to life? Of course I do. Perhaps we could explore a romantic series together. <laughs> Oh, I do so love to spend hours diving deep into tomes of superior Japanese literature. Teach me your favorite, senpai. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for commenting on my state of dress. I did spend hours agonizing about what to wear in the event that I would have the mere chance to be held in your gaze. I'm so pleased that my garments have met your approval, dear sir. An, an elf princess... <laughs> There it is again. <sighs> Dear sir, surely you would not compare me to thine waifu. What shall the people say of you betraying your lady love for a normie such as I? Ask me not to trod on your reputation, my love. <laughs> <laughs> he grinned, and I could see his placken-cased mouth. <clears throat> I was overtaken by the sudden urge to do shots of mouthwash, and pour bleach directly into my eyes. <laughs> I, I see you're a woman of culture, he spoke, in what I can only assume was his idea of a flirtatious manner. <laughs> to me, it sounded vaguely like when an engine has trouble turning over in the dead of winter. That's the neckbeard voice, all right. <laughs> While I pondered how this animate tub of bad fashion choices managed to make a noise like that, this fucker grabbed my hand. He held it in his sweaty palms and attempted to kiss it. I say, attempted. <laughs> Beardo's idea of kissing a gal's hand was essentially to just slobber on the whole thing. <laughs> I thought he was trying to eat my hand. My pretty lace gloves, they never stood a chance. <laughs> Drool seeped into the delicate patterns and I knew there was no going back. The neckbeard had marked me. I recoiled from all of it. <laughs> when my senses came to, I pulled my arm back. He looked at me with a mix of confusion, longing, and a third thing that I'm not really sure what it was. Horny. <laughs> all I knew was that I wanted out. <laughs> I turned on my heel and completely abandoned my station. The pleas of the neckbeard, who now found himself slightly wedged in the folding chair two sizes too small, <laughs> fell on deaf ears. I peeled off my glove and its pair and threw them into the trash. Goodbye, fair gloves. You shall be missed. A worthy sacrifice. <laughs> I marched to my car, 
texted the event coordinator that the heat was getting to me and that I was going home to relax. They understood. It was late in the day and the event was almost over. The neckbeard never found me again to my utter relief. When I went to go visit my grandma again before classes started in the fall, she spoke about some neighbor's nephew, hmm? who had met a pretty girl who had volunteered at the event and he was intent on asking her out. He'd gone to the event organizers asking for my contact information and they gave him the brilliant excuse of, she was a walk-on volunteer. We don't know who she is. <laughs> Excellent. I salute you event organizers, whoever you are. And that is my neckbeard story. I got a couple more from my life, and if you guys want, I will totally share my tales. Oh, please, OP, the way that you write, just beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely had me in stitches, and this is a nice break from, like, the heavier forms of cringe that we've been getting lately, so I'm definitely grateful to you. I am sorry that the gloves had to go bye-bye, you know? <laughs> But that's better than accidentally, like, you know, getting your hand slobbered on. Then you gotta, like, bleach your hands, soak it in battery acid. <laughs> it never turns out well. I can tell just from the story that you are indeed a good noodle. You know, volunteering at events, having your little garden, playing Civ Five. hey. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does make for classic neckbeard bait, but a little bit more fortunately is the fact that you got out mostly unscathed. <laughs> I definitely hope that you'll share some more stories with us. And also, tell me what kind of ice cream he was eating. I'm probably going to post a poll as soon as this video goes up about some possible neckbeard ice cream flavors because I seem to get pretty good responses for them polls, you know? Stuff that I never would have considered. I asked about neckbeard instruments in my last poll, which was interesting, and some great stuff got brought up, like harmonica, uh, a lute... Maybe pulling out his beard strings and f sawing on them like a violin or plucking them like a harp. <laughs> oh, this comments make me crack up, man. Star Wars ain't for nobody, you mouth breather. <laughs> So our first story today is from user She Who Dances. She's actually written two stories, but I'm going to read the second one first because it seems like a, a slower way to ease us into things. <laughs> I've also seen that she's in the comments, like patiently awaiting her turn. So today is your day. I do value your patience <laughs> and it has paid off. So we have Shipbeard, the ingenious man of infinite breath. Ingenious. Well, that's that's a good thing to call a beard. I guess we'll see. Gather around the pentagram, children. Your favorite succubus has once again returned to regale you with a story of her past. This one is a personal favorite, so sit down and join the fun. But first, of course, your darling's cast. OP, your darling succubus of a narrator. Mute, absolutely beautiful, if I'm allowed to toot my own horn and apparently uh, quite approachable. Shipbeard, the neckbeard of our tale. Short and actually quite slim, but with very baggy clothes. Didn't take much notice of them for reasons that will soon become clear. Bro, if you're slim, why are you gonna wear baggy clothes and make people think that you're fat? Like, <laughs> rock those skinny jeans if you can do it. Lord knows I can't. <laughs> This took place back in 2019 at a costume party in my area. Oh, see, he was dressed up like a gangster rapper. <laughs> I don't know. I went dressed as niece now from the game Azure Lane. For a bit of context, Azure Lane is a game about the ships of the Second World War turned into anime girls. Oh, God. First we got Hitalia, now we got Azure Lane. There's also Moemon, which is like... Pokemon turned into little anime girls or something. <laughs> it's gone too far, okay? <laughs> I suppose I would be remiss not to share her design for those curious. So here you go. Here it is right here. There's definitely something phallic about that. <laughs> Can't quite put my finger on it. Anyways, the party was going nicely until I felt someone tap my shoulder. I flinched, turning around, and suddenly finding myself face to face with a man, or at least an approximate representation of a man. <laughs> Shipbeard, hey, I like your outfit. I nodded my thanks, 
reaching into my pocket to pull out a flashcard that said, I'm mute. When I don't have someone around to talk for me, I usually carry one of these. Shipbeard, that's this now, right? I once again nodded, and his enthusiasm seemed to soar. Little did I know, I had just sentenced myself to the horrors that began to unfold before me. This man rambled for three hours straight about ships from World War II. <laughs> Do you have a flashcard that says, please shut up, I can't take anymore? <laughs> to his credit, he was very knowledgeable about the ships that he spoke of. To his discredit, he was not very knowledgeable about the discomfort of the girl that he was endlessly talking to. He didn't even take a breath as he talked. His lungs seemed to just have infinite capacity as he kept following me from room to room. <laughs> he felt like my very own little Jason Voorhees, stalking me and rambling about ships. I was concerned that he would talk to me for the rest of the party, and I wished deeply to get away from this menace of a man. Eventually, I had to dip into the bathroom and just try and wait for him to leave. Nope, he stayed at the door, continuing to talk to me <laughs> for over 20 godforsaken minutes. <laughs> uh, she's just trying to have a piss, like, back off for a minute. Oh my god, that is glorious cringe. <laughs> I just wanted to open a portal back to hell right then and there. Possible consequences be damned. Eventually, thank goodness, he got bored of waiting and finally wandered off. I spent the rest of the night ducking behind taller people and hiding from Shipbeard's gaze. <laughs> now, I do always say that it's great to have something that you're passionate about. I got no problem with people that are passionate about World War II ships, tanks, etc. But there comes a point where you are imposing on other people, and that's where I got to draw the line. Now, this guy might have some sort of disability that makes him uh, incapable of reading social cues and the like. And since OP is mute, she literally cannot tell him to go fuck himself. <laughs> so it's really strange. I guess he took like silence as consent or something like that. But honestly, she's probably like rolling her eyes, obviously walking away from him. And he's still following like at a certain point. Maybe you just go off and, like, find somebody else to engage with <laughs> and hopefully he gets the message. But even the person that you engage with might be even more creepy than this World War II obsessed ship man. <laughs> it's so weird. I always say, you know, like what you like, do whatever you do, but don't cause other people harm or distress. And this guy clearly was causing some distress. OP having to hide in the bathroom, like... It's really unacceptable. He didn't make a pass at her or anything, but even something as seemingly innocuous as this can be taken too far. And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. We don't get a lot of beard stories that are this innocent. <laughs> so I think that's a pretty nice way to open the video up. And now we'll go into uh, She Who Dances' other story that was posted and see how that goes. Tell you from the title, it ain't gonna be as innocent. <laughs> the tale of Handy Beard, the beard who could not keep his hands to himself. Very naughty. Why don't you just talk to OP about World War II ships? <laughs> She'll put up with that for three hours, at least. <laughs> Gather around the pentagram, children. Your dancing succubus has come to tell you one of her many tales of the men that she has dealt with. Though I guessed we must meet those involved first. OP, of course, myself, with blood red hair, golden eyes, slim body, and very massive bust. I've often been compared to a succubus. I am completely mute and not into men at all. R is my closest friend, partly because we share a birthday. He's very talkative and passionate, but he has a problem with confrontation. And of course, Handy Beard. Doesn't really look much like your typical beard, but he sure smells and acts like one. Well, OP, as we like to say around here, it's the beard on the inside that counts. Go ahead and pick that t-shirt up on Teespring, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he wears an admittedly pretty nice fedora, but he smells like my ex's toilet most days. So since you're not into guys, your ex is, I presume, a lady. Do ladies' toilets smell? <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't really know. I get most of the blame when our toilet smells. <laughs> but maybe, just maybe, it's something to ponder. Anyways, now let us descend into the infernos and begin this story. This took place around 2019 to 2020. Oh, so it's chronologically correct, even if not the post order. Sweet. <laughs> a little bit before human malware shut us all inside. I mean, admittedly, I'm a homebody. I enjoyed it at first, but a year plus of it, yeah, I I've had enough. I think we've all had enough. R and myself were sitting in a park as he talked about a new idea that he had. He didn't know American Sign Language all that well, so it was usually just me listening or texting him with any questions I had about what he was talking about. Eventually, a man realizes that he cannot talk forever, as much as he would wish to, and so my dear friend had to step away to get a drink of water and use the bathroom. After he ducks inside the men's room, I smell the most unpleasant odor behind me. Describe the odor, OP. Bring the foulness to me! <laughs> <laughs> I look around and I see something that I have never seen, even in the depths of the circle of hell that I call home. It was Handy Beard. He sits next to me and just starts talking. Handy Beard, I saw you with your boyfriend there. <laughs> kind of rude that he never lets you speak and just keeps rambling on about childish things, yeah? I, dear readers, took a bit of offense to that. R is always doing his best to accommodate me in my condition with his needs, so I shot this presumptuous man a death glare. Handy Beard, I'm just saying, a girl like you deserves whatever a man can give you, especially with these. <laughs> and with that, the freak reached out a hand and grabbed at my right breast. Jesus Christ. Just lost any and all sympathy from me. At this point, it's assault. Do whatever you want. Break his arm. <laughs> all I'm going to do is laugh. I hope he gets it. I hope he gets it real good. Slay him now, OP. Now, succubi might be known for their lustful desires, but uh, we have standards. <laughs> That's funny. Don't grab us if we don't give consent. Ever. And that goes for humans as well. What the hell is going on in your head, Beardo? So my rage boiled over. According to R, who was coming back at this time, I grabbed him, still groping me, mind you, and I slammed his face into that stone-ass table that I was sitting at. Yes! <laughs> he recoiled, shrieking like the damned souls that I see each day on my morning commute. Handy beard. Well, what the hell is wrong with you, you crazy bitch? R. Hey, hey, hey! What the hell is going on here? Handy Beard. Your crazy girlfriend just broke my fucking nose. This is why you should keep her ass on a leash. R. Sir, I think we should go our separate ways. <laughs> What kind of response is that? He just bashed his head onto the table again. With that, R grabbed my arm and we proceeded to book it the hell out of there. Sometimes the most bothersome demons rarely come to hell unless they have something to prove. Yep, assault's assault, like I said. <laughs> Go ahead, do whatever you want at that point. He should feel lucky that he just got away with a broken nose, dude. I mean, this sort of thing is, to me, like, super outside the realm of possibility because I would never think to sit down and do something like that. But in my heart, I know there are people like this out there. Ah, you should probably just carry a switchblade, OP. They're like, okay, I'm taking one of your fingers with me then. <laughs> Honestly, that's probably not enough. The broken nose is also not enough. Them in combination is not enough because actions like this can be severely traumatic. Part of me even wants to be big mad at R for just like being like, okay, let, let's go. <laughs> but he probably made the right move by just removing you from the situation and not escalating things any further. Although a big chunk of me really wishes that he would have. <laughs> and that beard would have had it coming, let me tell you. Uh, a pair of very nice stories, OP. I do hope that you will share some more with us in the future, although I don't wish any additional beard encounters upon you, but if you've had some more in the past, then do feel free to share, and I'll be looking forward to it. But for now, let's go ahead and continue on into our third story. 
This is from user Remus R3, the freshest of the bunch, posted only one day ago, and it is a neckbeard tells me all about his cowgirl fetish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I could see that. It's not as common as like a teacher or a naughty nun. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it is one of the stereotypical fantasies. Not that I would know anything about that. <laughs> wink, wink. So I thought I'd tell this story of my friend, the Neckbeard. My friend, the Neckbeard. Oh, OP. My sympathies already. <laughs> or Swordbeard, as I like to call him. So without further ado, meet our lovely cast of characters. Scar, that would be me. Not me, actually, like OP. <laughs> Hi! I'm a 16-year-old girl who loves reading and is quite quiet. I'm 5'3", which is short, especially in my school, long brown hair, blue eyes, usually wearing some dark eyeshadow and eyeliner as makeup. I'm pretty skinny for my age, and I do enjoy running and dancing, so physically I am in good shape. I usually dress in a very goth and punk style, dark clothes, heavy boots, and chains. Sick, sick. Samesies, at least when I was 16. <laughs> Aragorn, my boyfriend of nearly three years now, complete nerd, yes, he picked the fake name himself, <laughs> a complete darling and supports me in everything that I do with a lot of enthusiasm, about six foot two, black hair and brown eyes, he's also in good shape, going to the gym four days a week and being part of a theater class that I'm also in, he dresses a lot more preppy, polo shirts, flannels, nice t-shirts, and jeans. Cool, same, same, that's about me now. <laughs> what an evolution! Swordbeard is the neckbeard of our stories. I met him my first day at Aragorn and Swordbeard school. He has a lot of sexist views and is very vocal about them. Has the view of women not being able to like nerdy things like video games and movies. <laughs> he should go hang out with Casino Beard. <laughs> Greasy black hair that's like curtains of spider's legs. Wow, that's evocative. <laughs> and dark brown eyes. Acne galore. He is actually really skinny, like stick skinny. He's about five foot eight, so he's taller than me, but shorter than Aragorn. Usually wears baggy fandom shirts and sweatpants or basketball shorts with worn out trainers for shoes. Some minor characters involve Nesta. My best friend and common sense radar. <laughs> Complete extrovert and will put a creep in his place. And also, she's Aragorn's sister. Legolas, one of my other best friends and Nesta's boyfriend of six years. The Fellowship. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. The rest of our friend group. And now, on with the story. Our old principal loved holidays. Like, loved, loved them. Even the smaller ones that we don't get breaks for, like Valentine's Day and Halloween. Halloween is when this story takes place. Do we really not get Halloween off? It's been way too long, I can't remember at all. <laughs> I guess it makes sense, because it's like, you know, nighttime funsies, but also, what are you going to do if you have school tomorrow? Go trick-or-treat and get all this candy and stay up all night? As soon as I'm president, bro, Halloween is a national holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Our principal did not miss a beat with Halloween. Classrooms decorated. Teachers dressed in costumes. The week before Halloween, if you didn't have any work to finish, Halloween movies. Bro, they let you watch slasher flicks at school? <laughs> I can't think of any other Halloween movies at the moment. They're all sort of grotesque, as Halloween is. <laughs> Students on the last week before Halloween dressed in costumes as well. Most students didn't actually dress up, they just wore their own clothes. I am one of those. I mean, I like Halloween, don't get me wrong. It's the peak of autumn. Halloween decorations are all over my room constantly, and it's the time of the year that no one questions you watching strictly horror movies. Plus, haunted houses and scare mazes are always fun. Hell yeah, dude, Fright Nights at Universal Studios, bro! Ow! Can't wait to take my fam over there. Even the little ones, I'm going to leave my kids such a mental scar. <laughs> That's a joke. It's just a joke, I swear. <laughs> Costumes, however, were just never my thing. I never liked them, even as a child. 
I had a massive fear of these mascot costumes, and I'm still slightly uncomfortable around them. So for this Halloween, I just wore the same black dress with different accessories and makeup to perpetuate the illusion of different costumes. One day, I was a biker. Another, I was a zombie girl. Another day, I was a World War II girl, looking like I walked off a propaganda poster. And then, a fateful cowgirl. <laughs> this was my mistake. To be a cowgirl, I took the usual black dress and paired it with a red and black flannel buttoning it up at the top and tucking the rest under me with a white belt and boots with a cheap sun hat and I did my hair in braided pigtails. This is where Swordbeard comes in. Unfortunately, I sat next to Swordbeard in multiple classes and he wore all black with a shitty Darth Vader mask. I hope it was the, the plastic one, you know, the ones that's not closed in the back, just a piece of elastic. <laughs> the flimsiest mask possible. Admittedly, it meant that he could say his heavy breathing from walking 10 steps to class was just a character choice. <laughs> I walked with Aragorn to class. He was dressed in all black as well, but with a jacket that I'd gotten him last Christmas that was meant to make him look like the Winter Soldier with a black bandana over his mouth. I went to sit next to Swordbeard, who was smelling of axe and misogyny. <laughs> I got out my notebook to write down ideas for a book that I was writing when Swordbeard, unfortunately, began to talk. Hey, Scar. Hi, Swordbeard. I said simply, You look really pretty. Uh, thanks. What are you meant to be? A cowgirl? I meant to be Darth Vader. <laughs> you probably couldn't tell. Yeah. Obviously, I wouldn't recognize one of the most iconic sci-fi characters ever. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> he just assumes because she's a woman, she ain't never seen Star Wars. That's adorable. Star Wars is for everybody, you mouth breather. <laughs> or I guess with the sequel trilogy rearing its ugly head, Star Wars ain't for nobody, you mouth breather. <laughs> <laughs> The teacher then was what I thought was my saving grace, telling us that we could all move to go sit with our friends. I quickly stood up and moved to sit on the desk with my friends as the teacher loaded up Saw. Saw? <laughs> uh, come children, let's just watch Saw together. Bro, what? <laughs> it was a 15, so we were fine. Doesn't somebody die in like the first few minutes of Saw? <laughs> I ain't watched that many of them, but I really don't think that's appropriate for children's. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were still two seats open. Aragorn and I were sat on one end of the desk, and opposite was Legolas and Nesta. But there was another part of the desk where two chairs sat next to each other, currently vacant. Until, of course, Swordbeard came to sit at the seat which was closest to me. I think my water bottle shook as he bounded over, <laughs> like in Jurassic Park and shit. And he plopped himself down. I think the Richter scale might have classified it as at least a level eight. I was still scribbling random ideas down while partially watching the movie, and I occasionally slid the notebook to Aragorn for him to check over the writing and give his opinion. Then Swordbeard opened his mouth. Ah, I always thought cowgirls were sexy. <laughs> Uh, hey, great segue. <laughs> Total non sequitur. Uh, I said nothing. Just kind of looked at Nesta to see if she heard that. And by the annoyance on her face, she most definitely did. So did Aragorn and Legolas because both of them clenched their jaws tightly. Yet, Swordbeard picked none of these signs up and decided to continue. I, I have this fantasy. <laughs> Then a cowgirl ties me up and rides me. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks for that, buddy. <laughs> I don't know who the hell lasts. It's like that meme format. No one. Swordbeard. <laughs> oh, God. I was still in shock. Just complete shock. Uh, I'd love for someone to do that for me. <laughs> He's still going! <laughs> I 
looked at Nesta, pleading her to shut him up. But she kept her composure until, Well, would you do that for me, Scar? I know you're apparently asexual, but we all know it's just a phase, and I can help you out of it. <sighs> I grabbed my boyfriend's hand, scared that he might punch this tub of creepy lard, and Nesta is just generally livid. For those that might not know, asexual means you have no sexual attraction to anyone. You can have romantic feelings, but you don't want to sleep with people. I very openly identify as asexual. So yeah, not only was Swordbeard misogynistic, he was also every type of phobic that you could get. Didn't you call him your friend at the very beginning? Yes! The, f the very first sentence! This is your friend? My friend the neckbeard! Oh god! You need to strip that friendship title away ASAP. <laughs> this is not good. Nesta leaned forward and passed Legolas, who was the person closest to Swordbeard aside from the empty chair. Her face looked calm, but it was that sort of cold calm that meant if you pushed her any further, she would attack. Now listen here, you little creep. Back off from Scar. She's not single, and she's also not here to fulfill your sick little fucking fantasy. Even if she was single, your limp toothpick dick would do nothing for her. <laughs> <laughs> so leave this table before I make you lose the very small amount of breath in your fat-filled lungs. She said it calmly and extremely quiet, but the annoyance was obvious. I think I got a little loud near the end. <laughs> this is just how I do anger. It's loud as shit. But <sighs> Swordbeard tried to defend himself. Swordbeard, if you don't leave, not only will you have Nesta on your case, but I will let go of Aragorn's arm and you'll have to deal with him, I warned. In reality, Aragorn is harmless. Nesta is really a lot scarier than he is. However, Nesta is only an inch or two taller than I am and of a similar build, so on the outside, she looked a lot more helpless. Aragorn, on the other hand, looks like he could kill you with one punch. <laughs> Our costumes didn't help either. Nesta was dressed as a character from a book in a long, light pink dress and a flower crown compared to her brother who was dressed like the fucking Winter Soldier. <laughs> I swear to God, man, the non sequitur... Right in the middle of the Saw movie is what sent me the most. <laughs> He's just like, let me tell you all about this fantasy that I got. And everybody's like, please shut up. <laughs> but he ain't gonna until he's threatened with violence. Thank God all it takes is the threat of violence in order for him to stop. There are just certain things that you don't ever need to share with people unless they specifically ask. And even then... Do it with quite a few reservations. <laughs> you don't just want to throw this kind of stuff out there and be like, hopefully you guys are okay with this. No, dude, nobody's okay with this. This is what happens when the internet goes too far, you know? Swordbeard goes home, gets on this fetish website, sees everybody talking about getting tied up, and he's like, okay, I guess this is a socially acceptable topic of conversation. <laughs> And then he brings his kink into a high school and everybody's like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> Please tell me no more. Ah, oh, what a specimen. Absolutely glorious. No, <laughs> stop helping. <laughs> well, that's just maddeningly unhelpful. Beard Bits, the curse of the anime voice. <laughs> Beard Bits, that sounds so gross and I love it. It's like just those little crumblies of Cheez-Its and whatnot. <laughs> Dorito crumbs in your beard. Oh, wonderful. I'm totally going to steal it. <laughs> Hi there. I'm new to Reddit, but I've been a fan of Red X for a while now. Oh, welcome to Reddit. I should really invest in Reddit because I bring a lot of people to this platform, I think. I've only had brief encounters with neckbeards, so this is just going to be a collection of mini stories. Some beard bits if you will. <laughs> and since they're from my subreddit, r slash redxreads, they're also red exclusives. God, we got a lot of branding going on this channel. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm not going to be using real names uh, for obvious reasons. Let's get into the cast with Cass. That's our OP, a teenager working at a coffee shop. 
I'm a major weeb, and my customer service voice sounds like a stereotypical anime girl. I'm also goth, and my hair looks suspiciously like a certain two-toned My Hero Academia character. Hmm. Sam, my supervisor at work, a super chill guy who genuinely did not give a shit what we did as long as there weren't customers around. Hell yeah, Sam. Stick it to the owner. Fuck him, right? <laughs> Dean was my coworker who had like zero chill. This dude was climbing on top of racks and got stuck on the ceiling on at least one occasion. What the hell? <laughs> NB and LB are neckbeard and legbeard. And now that that is out of the way, let us dive right into the cringe. That's my line. Story one, seeing your discount. This took place at the height of COVID and we were doing drive through only. This happened months ago, so I don't remember exactly what was said, but I'll do my best. We were consistently without customers, but every once in a while, between playing various MMOs with my coworkers and blasting my chemical romance through the speakers, a tone would ring out from the drive-thru, letting us know that some poor soul would have to put up with our shit while we made their coffee. <laughs> On this fateful day, I had the great misfortune of taking this guy's order. I let out the typical greeting, using my fake sweet voice and sounding like an anime schoolgirl in the process. God, I got to do an anime schoolgirl voice. <laughs> this is going to be bad. OP. Hi, what can I get for you today? Neckbeard. Uh, just a large black coffee, sweetheart. <laughs> With the secret discount, please. Now, the way this guy said, sweetheart, gave me the creeps, but I shrugged it off. When he got to the window, I was still using the voice. OP, here's that coffee for you. Have a great day. Neckbeard paused for a moment before speaking. Neckbeard, next time, you should take that mask down and show your pretty smile. Ugh, major creep vibes. And also, hello, infection. <laughs> How about new? No? He then drove away, just leaving me shocked. I am visibly underage, and this dude was old enough to get the goddamn senior discount. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's major creep vibes, man. It happens far too often, though. I don't know if these dudes are just shooting their shots or if they find, like, some girls with daddy issues every once in a while, and sometimes it works. Either way... I hate it. <laughs> Sam said, Damn, looks like someone likes the anime voice. Oh my god. OP, probably watches tentacle hentai. <laughs> Dean, wow, Cass, oh, your first sugar daddy. I kind of just laughed the whole thing off and made a run for it every time I saw this guy pulling up to the window for the rest of the time that I worked there. Hell yeah, you don't want none of that action. Getting an allowance from a sugar daddy sounds pretty sweet, but not if he's a neckbeard. <laughs> I'll just continue making coffee. That is absolutely fine. Come at me with the most fucking basic line in the book. Ooh, you should smile more. Like, bitch, get out of my face. <laughs> you know how many people tell me that shit? You know how many times it works? Never. Anyways, story two, Oreos and guns. At the store, we had a very popular drink involving Oreos that this one lady would order every single day around 6 p.m. She would only let certain people make her drink, and I, maybe unfortunately, <laughs> was one of her favorites. Besides low-key making fun of me for being too quiet, she was super sweet to me. My black co-workers, uh, not so much. <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> She would just stay at the window for like 10 minutes, complaining about Biden, who wasn't even in office yet. She would also rant about her guns and teaching her kids how to use them. I'm not trying to get political, but you don't just go up to people at a fucking drive through <laughs> and rant about your beliefs. I noticed that she would only do this to my black coworkers. She would occasionally talk guns with Sam, but her tone was much more friendly. <laughs> What the hell? Uh, oh, boy. I think the only proper response at that point is, ma'am, this is a Starbucks drive through <laughs> I don't care. I don't care about your beliefs. I do have more stories, so if y'all want more, I can make a part two. 
My co-workers have a bigger role in some of the other stories. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. Make sure you get enough sleep, because I certainly don't. God, I relate to that last line too fucking much. <laughs> but that's okay. We're doing the work that we love. We live in the life that we love. That's just why we can't sleep, you know? Too much good stuff is going on. <laughs> there were definitely some diametrically opposed undertones in both of these stories. One, pretty racist. The other one, pretty creepy. <laughs> I don't like either one of them. God bless anybody out there who's working in like food service or retail, customer service. It, it is all just such a difficult job and you will probably encounter some uh, less than stellar people while you're doing it. There are also some of the cool ones, you know. When I used to work at Radio Shack, this dude would always come in right about closing time and share cocaine with us. Like, <laughs> I guess he just needed somebody to do it with. And why not? The Radio Shack guys are right there. <laughs> but yeah, there's also a lot of people who uh, get offended for no reason or just have a giant stick up their ass. Want to shove their political beliefs or uh, something else down your throat? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, we're going to get off track here in a minute. So I'm just going to wrap it up. Thank you very much for the post, OP. If you want to write a part two, I would look forward to it. But for now, we're going to move on into our third story. Milady and the Ring. Precious. <laughs> Howdy everyone! I recently started listening to Red X on YouTube, and I absolutely adore his narration and commentary. Oh, and commentary! That's super sweet. A lot of people tell me that I need to shut up, but I, I just can't. <laughs> My mouth just keeps going like a mile a minute, and then I take the video into editing, and I'm like, if I cut all my talking out, this is only a 10 minute video. <laughs> uh. Uh, but I do appreciate your appreciation. I'm very happy to bring it to you and very happy that all of you guys are watching. The Neckbeard stories and tabletop horror stories being my favorites by far. Ah uh, yes, I mean Neckbeard stories obviously, but we need to get some more RPG horror stories going. I know that they're like a, a sleeper hit on the channel. Anywho, after falling down the Red X rabbit hole, I realized that I have a few Neckbeard stories to tell myself. I apologize in advance, my writing is a bit rusty, and to add insult to injury, I'm also on mobile. <laughs> and I like how they spelled it mobly. <laughs> I'm on mobli. <laughs> God, it cracks me up for no reason. But regardless, I submit, for the entertainment and study of the Red X masses, the thankfully short tale of Milady and the ring. What do you mean you're engaged? <laughs> For half a decade, I worked at a buffet in a small but bustling casino in a town in northern Nevada. As you can imagine, such a place of employment is froth <laughs> with all kinds of curious characters, all of them gathering in one place to tip their tasteful hats towards Lady Luck in hopes of gaining her favor. Drinks flowing freely to those willing to risk it all. <laughs> it does seem like a really interesting job. One of those things that I'd like to do for like a week <laughs> and then just be done with it forever. The day of our story, however, was a rather quiet one. A weekday where the staff was sparse and the tables were relatively empty. I was posted at the front, the lone cashier with only one of the hosts, and occasionally a board server to keep me from losing whatever is left of my poor mind. <laughs> However, all conversation ceased when he approached me. Oh no, not he. <laughs> Clad in a faded black Star Wars t-shirt, ratty black jeans, a cheap looking chain hanging from a single belt loop, and shoulder length and rather unkempt brown hair, under none other than a black and gray pinstriped fedora. Ah, oh, yes, classy gentleman out on the town. <laughs> Luckily, he only smelled like nicotine and just a gentle hint of Mary Jane, which was unpleasant to my nose, but not unbearable. His thin frame towered over mine, 
as he practically leaned into my space from over the counter, standing right up against it to get as close as he did. He was also in the company of a friend who I can't really recall much about other than the fact that he ordered a Diet Coke. Hey, OP, <laughs> he said to me casually. The familiarity in which he greeted me immediately set off some alarms in my head. Although I have trouble with names, I'm very good at remembering faces. I knew our regulars, and this man's face was not on file. <laughs> oh, hello. What can I get you to drink? I said with a friendly tone and a polite smile. I was at work, after all. You don't remember me, he asked sadly. I remember you. Oh, God, dude, that is so ominous. If you're trying to make your move, this is the worst way to make it. <laughs> the alarms rang louder, and I laughed nervously. I dealt with some extreme anxiety, and just talking to normal people triggers my fight or flight. Rather, my flight or flight, since I actually detest confrontation. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. We get a lot of people coming through here. Sometimes it's just hard to remember everyone. I understand, he replied. Uh, although I was now intensely focusing on the screen in front of me, I could feel this man's eyes on me, just leering down at me like a vulture with its sights set on a dying animal. I've never appreciated the high collar of my uniform more so than I did in that very moment. <laughs> Yeah, thank God for small blessings, huh? I'm a busty girl, something that couldn't be hidden by our baggy uniform shirts, and it has attracted unwanted attention and comments ever since puberty hit. While I can't 100% confirm that that is the area where he was staring, I don't doubt it for a second. Nor do I, OP. You know, a lot has changed since I last saw you. You're blonde now. At the time, I had bleached my hair a bright platinum. It was relatively new, and the comment only served to unnerve me even further. I tried to end this interaction as quickly as possible. Yeah, will you be paying with cash or card? <laughs> uh, I see you got married at the time I was gone, too. Bitch, I don't remember you. <laughs> I'm sorry, in your tiny mind, your minuscule frame of reference, I'm some sort of main fucking character, but I don't even know who you are. Ugh! The rage is already rising. <laughs> I looked down at the costume ring on my left hand. It was an accessory that I started sporting to discourage the more flirty customers. Now, it only seemed to spur this one on. Engaged, actually. I lied figuring that it was more believable since I didn't know how long ago this creep had started watching me. God damn it, dude. Never mind. I don't want to work this job ever, ever. <laughs> Sounds absolutely miserable. And of course, our neckbeard presses on. Well, you should come and visit me in my room later. <laughs> God. I was floored. Was he serious? Was this a joke? After I had just said that I was engaged, how the hell was that an opening to keep on pursuing me? I laughed again, sounding strained even to my own ears. <laughs> I don't think my fiancé would appreciate that. I know I should have just said no and ended it there. Yeah, smack him on the nose with a newspaper. No, that's bad! <laughs> but I was uncomfortable and I was desperately trying to end this while still being polite. Ugh, poor women at work, man. My heart goes out to you. You gotta be polite to these people who are obviously just fucking creeps. Anywhere else, you could just go ghost. <laughs> but at work, you're stuck at your post. Heh, that rhymes. <laughs> uh, this man, <laughs> this scraggly bearded thing, had the audacity to smirk at me. <laughs> oh, your fiancé's not here right now, is he? I wanted to scream. <laughs> so do I. I didn't, of course. Instead, I quickly printed out his receipt 
and handed it to his friend with a tight smile. Our host will get you seated. Enjoy your meal. He left to be seated, and I naively thought that that was mercifully the end of it. Ugh, how I wish that it had been. As the night went on, the host went home early because of the lack of incoming guests. Scraggly Beard and company kept to themselves, talking really only to each other and their server. However, he apparently just couldn't stop talking about me to the staff. The women I worked with at the time, bless their hearts, were determined to get me a boyfriend. Oh, that is so unhelpful. Thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> Since I also had nerdy interests, such as video games, D&D, &D, just about anything high fantasy, and yes, even Star Wars, logically, this man would be a perfect fit for me. <laughs> God damn it. A match made in the deepest pits of Tartarus. I'd been rolling silverware for the last 30 minutes. I was focusing on my work and minding my own goddamn business when Scraggly reappeared. Hey again! I jumped, but Dick was standing directly behind me, so close that I could feel the heat coming off of his body. Probably don't call him a dick in that moment. <laughs> That's really gross. I was essentially trapped between him and the host counter now. Um, hi. Every single fiber of my being was desperate to be anywhere but right there. So... I was talking to the waitress, and she said you weren't engaged. <laughs> you weren't lying to me, were you? <sighs> God damn it. I was mortified, just praying that the ceiling would fall and crush us both. <laughs> Anything at all to end this godforsaken conversation. If this attempt to corner and intimidate a woman half his size and age could be classified as a conversation. Mind you, I was 22 at the time, and this guy had to be in his late 30s or early 40s. It's a recent engagement, I tried to explain. I haven't told anyone about it yet. I don't know what made him walk away after that. I was so stressed in that moment that I might have briefly blacked out. Thankfully, though, he did leave the buffet. Hey, that's a pretty slick cover, though, OP. <laughs> I gotta give you props on that. Quick thinking indeed. Although before the Beardo left, he said, I'll see you next time, OP. And with that, he left me standing there with wide eyes and trembling hands. I had eager little waitresses approaching me in his wake and asking if I got his number. Bitch, no. <laughs> Stop helping. <laughs> I said no, and that he made me uncomfortable before returning to rolling and pointedly keeping to myself for the rest of the night. Scraggly had completely disregarded my boundaries, and these women had disregarded my feelings. I was tired and just fucking done for the day. Fortunately, I did not have any further encounters with Scraggly Beard. However... One does not simply have nerdy interests and avoid neckbeards entirely. God, that's so true. <laughs> I have a few more stories if anyone's interested, but for now, this is farewell. Stay safe, everyone. TLDR, a stranger harasses me at work and takes my engagement ring as an opening to continue nagging my co-workers about me before disappearing into the night. Also, sorry about the repost. This is my first post on Reddit, and I accidentally applied a live chat to it. <laughs> yeah, my subreddit is not really uh, set up very well. I should probably get with somebody who has uh, more understanding and experience with setting up subreddits and whatnot, but it seems to work for now. You did get the story post eventually, and I definitely do appreciate it, although it did get the rage boiling. The Beardo, just a horrible person trying to shoot his shot, even after the engagement ring is noticed. Like, have you no shame, you absolute dog? Have you no respect for a relationship and the two people that are involved in it? No, he just wants to hit on the fucking hostess and feel like a big man. And because OP was doing her job and not blowing him off entirely, he still thinks that he has a chance the entire time questioning all the waitresses and shit. 
the waitresses just completely smashing boundaries and being like, oh, no, she told you she's engaged. She's totally single. You should go over there again. Like, <laughs> please, I with friends like these, who needs enemies? God damn it. I don't even have the words for how uncomfortable and angry this story makes me. My wife, clearly married, but god damn if people don't hit on her every time she goes out by herself. And then mysteriously when I go out with her, nobody has anything to say to her. <laughs> Isn't that weird? She already told me about it. That's why I'm standing here mean mugging you, dude. <laughs> why don't you come over and try it now? Just see what happens. Luckily, this beard did not see you next time. I don't know what happened to him. I hope he got hit by a fucking bus. <laughs> Let's just hope for that. Sometimes the trash takes itself out. <laughs> God damn. I am glad you're on to bigger and better things now, OP. It sounds like a fun job on paper. There probably were some cool people that came through. But, oh, there are probably a lot of creeps as well. So I do hope you'll share some more stories with us. And uh, thank you for posting this one. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy, that's always appreciated. Maybe share the video around if you're trying to give somebody a little taste of them neck beards. I mean, not like that. Gross. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. I also hope you check out them links in the description. All kinds of plugs and playlists and social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Come on through. Hit me up. We also got my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous... Patrons! Yes, indeed, I'd like to thank them as I do every video! So thank you very much. Calvicus, Fatboy Shirt, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, USMC, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdala Marshall, Thornrose, Cherish Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Satori, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, OG James Cook, A Pimp Named J Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Lexi Loves Jojo, Lord Lion O, Jack, it's Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. J, my boy Nat one Nick, Lady Nicks, or Gamey Steve, Katie Kins and Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Dash, Siegfried, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tapioca Boogaloo, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Mags, Redwood, Gooses, Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, Saints Blessing, John Indoors, A Normal Joe, Amara, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry! <laughs> California Keto Girl, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Little Ann Woods, Mark 211, maybe next time, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Orgame McCann, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Ellie, The Last Shinobi, and The Necrobomicon. <laughs> Thank you guys all very much for supporting the channel in the way that you do. It does mean the world to me. I hope that some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now, monetarily, Ain't no problem there, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through and hanging out with me. And I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. But also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. I hope. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.